on the docket that we could possibly be checking out before this. Um, I'm hesitant to show any of the uh, AEW's website or anything. I'd love to uh, to show you guys the lineup and all that, but I don't want any I don't want any issues. So we're gonna we're gonna do something else. Let's get over here. Oh yes. Welcome everybody. Finished Viking, welcome. I'll be tweeting in a second. Thank you very much for uh, bringing that up, radio. Oh gosh, I want to watch this close up with uh, Samoa Joe as well, but I can't do it. I can't do it. We can uh get to see what's happening over here. That guy who made that uh Will Ospreay um it's kind of like a like a retrospective or something. That was really good. I wonder if he's done anything new. That's another thing that probably has some AEW footage in it, though, so probably not going to do that. Oh, yeah. Zach's in the house. What's up, Zach? Yeah, I don't know what the footage is going to be, but we're going to... I'm going to keep you guys up on things. Um, Let's see here. Oh, this could be interesting. Let me let me see if there's something on here that I haven't seen. Or that we haven't seen. Yeah, we, we didn't we didn't really finish that video, but It's not a whole video about if countouts would work in 2024. It's it's like a minute long. Let's check it. Let's see what they're talking about. Yeah, I think the countout is something that you have to be careful with, but um, I don't see it very often. They don't really do it all the time anymore, or they don't they don't really uh, go there unless they're just prolonging stuff. They don't make it really matter. I think there are ways to do it that will matter and that that could could be as um meaningful and and uh, elicit an emotion the same as a, a regular win like a one two three even even in some cases maybe even more than that like uh that'd be a cool way for them to uh um you know how there, there are these matches that i have a problem with sometimes where it's a guy who's uh or just a person who's they're presented as the the big deal like they're the best wrestler the people they're gonna they're gonna beat everybody but then they have like these troublesome 20 minute matches with people who aren't presented that way and you know it's supposed to give the the other person the rub like oh look at how well they did against this this uh super duper star maybe the count out victory could be some or could be something that they could utilize more often to to get that sort of like, oh, look, he beat this guy, but he didn't really beat this guy. You know, there's maybe they, they could be used a little bit more like that instead of just the straight up. They beat each other up for 20 minutes and then the the big the big star wins at the end and makes him look even like less than he was when he came into the match. Have I heard if Okada's going to be there? I don't think so. I didn't see any Okada. I didn't see spots. any uh, now the finishes... Mercedes. I didn't see any Will Ospreay. I didn't, I didn't see any of their new signings actually um, advertised for tonight. Kind of a strange fight card tonight, but it, they they know what the big the big talk of the town is going to be. So I don't really blame them for not wanting to try to stack a whole bunch of marquee type stuff on the show and and have it get overshadowed. You know what I mean? It's kind of like eh, let's back off a little bit not make the rest of the show overshadow the, the big talk of the town 
Goki, what's up, man? Welcome. But yeah, I have not heard if Okada is going to be there. So if he is, it'll be a surprise at this point. This match, people in 2024 might say, oh, it's a count out finish. It's, it's a screw job finish. The fans didn't get a real finish. Well, these fans in 1985 had Madison Square Garden, one of the hardest places to please the fans outside of Philadelphia. I know that for, for a fact. This is a count-out victory for Ricky Steamboat, and I, I'm going oh, to put Ricky, the nice. match in the description so you can hear the Ricky. sound. The fans cheered for the count-out. It happened when Steamboat did this. Enziguri, Valentine takes a hell of a bump on the outside, and they did a count-out. Now, there's an aftermath to this. When the announcement happened, people cheered, which was after this. But basically right here, Valentine got back in the ring, and they start going again. See, that's cool. Let's this. See, this is what I'm talking about. Not everything has to this be is, straight up one, yeah. two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again. Oh, oh, right ring the, the bell, one, two, three, ring the bell, or one, two, three, so, ring the bell. There's so many inventive ways Howard you can make Finkel it work. did not announce the winner Draco, until the welcome. aftermath was done. So the fans cheered not only for Ricky's comeback and then knocking Valentine outside over the ropes to the floor, like how cool but is also that? the aftermath short brawl. Steamboat got the better of that. They cheered. Then when Finkel announced that Steamboat won from countout or by countout, they cheered even more. Would it fly in 2024? I say, why not try it? Yeah, because the way they designed this match, my God. Cloud so gaming? <laughs> cloud gaming. What's uh, what's on the cloud gaming? What you got? I really want to boot up my Xbox and see what I have access to. I know that there's that, uh, that what's it called? A curious case of... Rick Fox. <laughs> I know it's not Rick Fox, but <laughs> curious case of Bernard Fox or something like that. I want to try that out as well. Seems cool. Agree. Why not? Yeah, why not try it? I mean, it's not like you don't put, you know, 10 matches on a, on an average AEW fight card. So why not make, why not experiment with some things like that instead of doing the same thing over and over again? Oh, man. They got this story trailer for Outlaws. I can't do it. I can't do it. I would do it, but I can't do it. This eating contest. I kind of want to see what happened in that. I still don't. I don't know who won. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything in my watch later that I that we can check out in the the brief period of time that we have before dynamite hits. Now, don't look. Don't look, guys. You're gonna see stuff that's to be saved for tomorrow during the nitty gritty. By the way, I do a, a gaming and entertainment talk show every Thursday called the nitty gritty where I show off the newest game trailers, movie trailers, behind the scenes, making of footage. It's basically like a little mini E3 that I do every, uh, every Thursday. Oh, dude, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some things that I really do want to show you guys, but we gotta, we gotta wait a little bit. Gosh, I wish I wish it wasn't so like uh, scary to show AEW stuff on here. I guess we could check out a little bit of Ma Maven's video here. The nitty gritty, heck yeah, man! If it's gorgeous, peak of combat. Want, oh, that that's that's if on uh, cloud there, gaming. Pulling together dozens of projects a year. How do you do that? They know where remarkable is always in stock at Floor and Decor. Lauren Decor. No, I think I'm late on my car insurance. Good thing the general gives you a break Almost when you need time it. for dynamite. Flexible payment options to keep you covered. Just tag us in. Like Thanks, right Shaq. Now? Oh, I was talking about insurance. For a great low rate, go with the general. This video was sponsored I should definitely by tag in Shaq. Hey guys, Maven here. Now, the peak for most wrestlers in our business is to have the chance to perform at a WrestleMania. The highlight of our I'll year, be right back. The Super Bowl in our business. And fortunately for me, I was able to perform in my first WrestleMania in 2002, where I defended the Hardcore Championship against Gold Dust. In this video, I'm going to be explaining and showing how a WrestleMania match gets put together, what makes that match unique and unlike any other, and what makes the entire WrestleMania week different than any other week throughout the entire year as a WWE wrestler. All right, so for me, my WrestleMania experience actually began two weeks prior to my first WrestleMania match. Now, what do I mean by that? 
Unlike my Royal Rumble experience where I found out the day of exactly what I was going to be doing and who I was going to be doing it with, The Undertaker, I found out that I was going to be in WrestleMania 18 two weeks before that fateful night. Already being the hardcore champion, I didn't know week to week going into Raw, SmackDown, or any of the non-televised events. I didn't know if I was going to retain the hardcore championship week in and week out. But finding out two weeks prior to WrestleMania that I would go into WrestleMania 18 as the hardcore champion, I knew for at least two weeks I could rest easy. Now, this didn't sit well with everyone, and I would later find out that Test, who would become one of my good friends, my app, I got cloud I would find out moon. that he was actually cloud supposed moon, huh. to have the match. Started playing that Hello I Neighbor too, getting. but <laughs> hey, business oh yeah, PlayStation well, Plus, nice. Do. Say no, of course not. I had to take the opportunity when the opportunity presented itself. So how did I find out? Well, a front office person came up to me and actually told me, Maven, get ready, actually get with Dustin, get with Gold Dust and start thinking hey, Dust. of your see him match. Tonight. My match for what? Your match for WrestleMania. I knew being able to work and being able to actually have a match in a WrestleMania is something that no one would ever be able to take away from me. That's the good side of it. But there's a flip side to that coin. There is a bad. And I immediately was just nervous, just scared, knowing that one, I probably wasn't prepared. Two, I probably needed a little bit more seasoning being that I was still extremely green. But I also. Oh, this I also is where he missed the garbage can, <laughs> where he did the drop a kick. Consummate professional. And knowing that I was going to be you know, wrestling with gold dust, it did ease my mind a little bit because I knew there was under no circumstances he was going to allow for a bad match. Now the week of WrestleMania for a WWE wrestler, it's unlike right any now the uh, all in backstage week. footage is at and 44% it's mind, leading in the vote. This years ago. This was back before the show split when the entire roster wrestled on both Raw and SmackDown said, one and then to do. <laughs> normally would go home on Wednesday. WrestleMania week's different, however. This week we would always fly from whatever town we were in to the town where WrestleMania would be. And I'm talking everyone would fly there. Whether you're on yeah, the Yeah, I heard from them. They, they said the that show, they watched my video, but they're going to uphold it. And then I, I looked at the video and it has zero views. The so they, Toronto, they never even looked at it. WrestleMania 18. It's a well-oiled machine. It's they not lie. like we have to stand and But they have a bunch of robots hotel. running the show, oh, so it's no. kind of like to yelling TV into the hotel, void, and by that trying I mean, to get anything the done with them. Everyone would stay. Production crew, wrestlers. But I'm just gonna everyone. keep on, keep and on working. They had our keep on doing what I do. Ready for us. We would hope for the best. And they would hand us our key card, and off we went. But. That doesn't mean that, you know, here's your key card, we'll see you Sunday at the show. Oh no, your responsibilities start as soon as you get there. I actually remember that Wednesday before WrestleMania, right after checking into my room, I had about an hour until I had to be back downstairs because a group of us had to go to a fan convention to do a meet and greet. That's crazy, dude. So you touch down, you land, you land, you get to the hotel, you go up to your room, then you got to leave your hotel and go go somewhere else. Like, dang, man. All right. But that's the life right there. People wish for that. And man, to be to be doing what you want, to be doing what you love and be on national television, have people who actually care about you and your your craft, that's awesome. Up, oh, it's the Ninja Turtles theme song. It's dynamite. <laughs> their their theme song sounds like Ninja Turtles to me. Let's go, guys! It's time. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Do you know what that means? You know what it is. is Ringmaster, TV welcome. Charleston, West Virginia. Let's go, guys! Let's get it. Oh yeah, they got rid of Dasha, so now they only have one announcer, I think. Your opening contest set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit is an AEW World 
title eliminator. Yep, Dustin Rhodes, they're starting off with it. A-Dub, A-Dub. Oh, Samoa Joe's coming out first. Interesting. You would think Dustin's music would hit. There we nah, see nah, the nah. arrival of nah, the nah, AEW nah. world champion. And this was the scene one week ago, Tony. Swear Strickland using that chain trying to choke out some I like his Joe, theme song, man. Joe's gonna kill you. From Huntington Beach, California. Wing three. Portman, what's up? Pizza power. Oh, Swerve jumped him. We saw Swerve Strickland. He signed that contract for Dynasty in his own blood. And now Swerve jumped him. Attacking Joe on the ramp. Hey, it's smart, good stuff by Swerve, in my opinion. But, oh, man, the table's rapidly turned. Dang. On Strickland. It is smart, Tank. You're right. Swerve you got decimated for trying. Got thrown into a barricade on the outside, and now uh, Samoa Joe is uncovering a table. Uh-oh. Are we ready, willing, and table? A-Dub, A-Dub, A-Dub. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. Let's keep that, keep that fire burning, man. Still got some time before a dynasty. Oh, speared through the table. Swerve put Samoa Joe through the table. That was a not so good bump. Ouch. Back of Joe's skull, definitely. Not only through the table, but man, into that that guardrail there. And our medical team right there on the spot as Swerve. I would have had Dustin come out first and have him in the ring eyes. during this, and then have some, and then have Swerve put Samoa Joe in the ring for him, and then Dustin is thinking about it like, oh, do I pin him or no or, or what? Goki, welcome. Now we got fifty percent is on the backstage out. stuff now. Fifty percent of the vote. I see twelve votes. Let's let's hope we got twelve thumbs up as well. Let's see. Almost. Kind of close. Make sure to get your thumbs up in here, guys. Sounds weird. Make sure to get. Make sure to leave a thumbs up. It's that like button, guys. That happened. Between Orange Cassidy and Pink. Beep, beep, beep. Orange Cassie and Trent Moretta. Let's go. Dang, so Samoa Joe got jumped, and I guess the match isn't happening right now. Maybe it'll happen later. The Young Bucks, they've made it to the finals. There you go, Excalibur. And you can... Oh! What the hell? I like that, that uh, turn that Trent did. That was good, man. What did he whisper to her? He whispered something to her, and she just Guys, looked I've at him. I've been trying to get hmm. a word with Orange Cassidy to get a reaction to what all went down with Trent Beretta last week on Dynamite, the implosion of the best friends in Orange Cassidy. Always a man of few words told me that this Friday on Rampage, right here in Charleston, he will have a match, and he assures me that he will be addressing the heartless actions of Trent Beretta. Wait, what? He'll have a match and he'll address the actions. Why doesn't he just address the actions? Why does he well, have to have a match? Trent Beretta, certainly with a lot of explaining to do. Fans, <laughs> okay. I mean, we're, we're I'm very upset about this. I'm going to have a match. I'm <laughs> still waiting for an update on Samoa Joe. Will he actually be able to compete here tonight? But aside from that, they're filming we the ceiling. Loaded. We understand that we have. Well, we okay, I guess we're going to this title match. <laughs> TNT championship match. Let's go to Justin Roberts. Is that their, their new idea? Film the ceiling until the guy comes out? Hmm. It's, a, it's definitely a production choice. Dude, that his pyro on his entrance looks so awesome. It's left a like. Bro, thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody who's leaving a thumbs up. I see that we're 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 getting there. <laughs> Penta came with the all blue outfit. Blue Penta, blue Tista, blue Tista way. 
so sure Penta or Adam Copeland were prepared to wrestle this quickly, Taz. Well, that, that's a good point, and that's probably the case for sure. Let's I mean, go. Know, it's, like it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing when you're not ready to go, but when you're a pro Time for like Adam Copeland, Edgeland. Pro like Penta, you got to be ready. Adam Edgeland. On this day, I see clearly. I need to get a new uh, TNT title. I, I like that red. I like that red on it. Let's see if I can find it. It's a real to me. Big interview with Orange. Acid, what's up, man? Welcome, welcome. WB's in the house, too. We'll have his... We'll say it's cool with his hands in his pocket. <laughs> BD, yeah. Uh, well, they just kind of bait and switched that match that they said they were starting with. But I like the way they did it, though. I thought that was that was pretty cool. Let's see if I can find it. And he's going to be in this big trios match coming up at Dynasty. And Taz, that's a, that's a tough situation for Briscoe and Eddie Kingston to be in. These two men just having done battle this past Friday yeah. night at Supercard of Honor, Ring of Honor event, and then having to team up at Dynasty alongside the rated R superstar. You just got to do what you got to do. I mean, it's just, you know, teammates Probably fighting really practice. Small. Then you go I don't out know if I'm going to use this You got to compete um, alongside that teammate, and that's what you're going to have with Kingston. How big is this? And Brick, uh, Briscoe. Uh, and not Kingston. usable. Uh -oh. This is big right here for the TNT title, boys. Yeah, Penta El Cerro Miedo, a former AEW World Tag Team Champion. Okay, that one's good. AEW World Trios Champion. He's never held an AEW Singles Championship. But he's a multi-time, as you just said, Excalibur World Champion. And that's something that Copeland's got to contend with. All right, we'll get a prediction well, on this one. But I have a feeling it's going to be long enough that I'll be able to sure does, get all this Penta done. Is getting same type of respect here from... These wild fans right here, AW fans in West Virginia. Okay, so I have that. So oh, I have to. Here. Copeland mm -hmm. observing as Penta occupies the center of the ring, and Penta no back down in him, zero fear. Zero Dang, piano. this might mess. Now, this might be mess it up. Cautious here, I would Dang think, it. Taz. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing as you, Tony, because yeah. you do All with right. someone who's unpredictable as Penta. Well, that's not going to sit well with Cope. I wonder if this is going to work. And, oh, 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 look at this! Penta! Oh, he's going to get it! Oh, wow! Huh. Damn. It was a blazing hot start right out of Copeland's playbook. And Penta to that. Oh, oh diving foot shot. He stuck him with that one. God. Now, Penta, the sense of urgency that covered. Very light kick out by Copeland. Let's see if this will work. The game plan right here by Penta. Shock and all right out of the box. Straight forward Jones trying to win the team uh -huh. title. Yeah, I think the last thing work. that Copeland was thinking about was a spear coming at him that early. Yeah, yeah Penta's a fear factor here, isn't he? Okay, I like that. Usually when he's coming that at you, pretty tests, nice. Looking for that sling blade, but instead he zigged where, uh, where Copeland expected the zag, and now oh. Copeland sets okay. the outside. Let's get this in the right Copeland spot. His jaw that time Good. falling down on the apron. When the guy zigs, then you think he zags. you got to watch out for the zoom. The zoom? <laughs> We'll save that for technique by Taz. Oh, Copeland dodging out of the way. Penta put on technique the Technique by Taz. Yeah, they haven't done that in a while either, have they? Copeland. The, where he, like, shows you how the moves here. are done and stuff. I used to like and that. Fans, we mentioned a great that was pretty cool. Still to come. We understand that Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, our EVPs, will present never-before-seen be never footage from all in London. We will have our Woo Energy. Match Woo, of energy. Night. Woo energy Woo match Energy match of the night. Chris Jericho <laughs> take on Shane That's Taylor the Woo Energy match of the night. Of the, the hook match with Chris the Jericho and Shibata. Shibata, the everybody's trio partner for some reason. <laughs> right here on TBS. Shibata's the, the, the journeyman helping everybody out. He's been helping heels, baby faces, doesn't matter. He's just he's like, I'll wrestle with anybody. <laughs> All right, the title's on the line. So you know what time. It's time to light it up. Oh, yes. You're picking Copeland to win? Yeah, me too. I think, I think for sure.
Is that the all-in footage they're going to be showing? Nobody knows. Show was like last year. I know. It's, it's strange timing, isn't it? <laughs> Blue Penta. <laughs> Looks good. Beatty, thanks. Yeah, we got it. We got it together. Alright, let's put a prediction on this one. My cable on this channel can only do picture and sound, so now I have sound to it. Oh, nice. Aaron, welcome. Aaron's here. Nathal Nathaniel's here. <laughs> Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathaniel, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Let's put a prediction on this one and see what you guys think is about to happen. Um, I, mean, I can't recall myself. I think he might be right. He's, he's just been, like you said, completely on over this day. Yeah, that. I see Dudley. Has Copeland rocked against that LED barricade? Gotta watch that out, Sapahantas. Gotta watch him, Sapahantas. Right, Adam. And he's Penta. a shady character. One, <laughs> Copeland now landing what I believe is his first. All right, predictions oh, are open, guys. Get your prediction in now if you'd like for it to count. The predictions are on the Twitch channel, by the way. Do I think WrestleMania 40 is the greatest WrestleMania of all time? Like everybody said? Who said that? People said that? Hmm. I have not considered that. Um, I think Copeland realizes, hey, you got to come after my title, so you're going to get counted out. It felt a lot more personal than a lot of the, the normal WrestleManias. It didn't feel like a, a lot of like, as much filler as normal, so I think it, I think it's better than a lot of them. I don't know about the best. I'd have to really think about it. That's a tough question. What do you think? A lot of people said that. Dang, okay. Uh, it was in Philadelphia, and that's a tough crowd, man. And everybody was, was loving it um, from, like, the, the big moments, at least. I know it was cold, and... <laughs> People were shivering or whatever. To get out of this here. The wrestle yeah, anyone for 99 <laughs> I think it's definitely up there. Champion dictating the pace here. If we don't have Brian Cage play Tony Khan in this security video, I'll be sad. I'll be sad. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so funny. Steve Bax, what's up? Steve Bax is back. WrestleMania 17 is awesome, dude. Jeez. That one always comes to mind when people ask me that, but I don't know, man. They're, they're all, they all have their reasons for existing. Oh, my goodness. This one was really special to me. <laughs> WrestleMania 31. Oh, my goodness. It's Merry Mania. Mary, thank you. Mary with a hundred bits. It's Mary Mania. I see you, Mary. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome to the stream, by the way. What a way to make your impression felt. <laughs> I appreciate it. Of the champion Adam Copeland. Night two was way better than night one. I'll say that. Hammer throw across Copeland. Uh oh. Oh look at this! Copeland and Tierra. Wow, how about that? I think it. I think it was at least like a hundred percent better. <laughs> Copeland, look at that! Wow. Another Tierra, but they, he's hanging on. Wow, that's not often. You see Cope do that, but he's maybe going old school right here. That is old school. Flying head scissors. Yeah. You're not kidding. And Penta. Now the headstand. Night two was was leaps and bounds better. It needed to be though, because I I felt like night one lacked energy. It lacked like that that extra special feeling. But by design, that's probably the way they wanted it to be, because the because of the payoffs that were coming. Sometimes you gotta have that that lull before the storm. I think they did a great job, though. Anybody can step up. Anybody can challenge Copeland for that TNT championship. And when you have a competitor so well-traveled, world-traveled, like Penta El Cerro Miedo, you never know what he's going to I've liked the last couple of these Dynamites, too. There have been some some not-so-great moments, but but a lot of it, I feel like they're moving in the right direction. The energy, the the redesign of this set and all that. The the new logo. There's a new type of energy here that's, that's working, I guess. That's... Uh, Goes to the ropes, leapfrog over that. Top. I don't know how else to put it. Copeland, three consecutive leapfrogs, and oh, Penta vaults over. Feels Copeland experimental in certain cases, though. It doesn't feel like they quite have their 
their handle on it, but it's definitely better than like the lull that they were in for a while. It's just kind of like, eh. That's good, but it's not great. Double foot. The double boot. Both men are down. Here's Copeland. Copeland evening the odds test. He connected at the same time as top five of all time says J Rock. Hey, okay. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like there there are manias that had less like personal feeling stuff and angles that weren't really set up all that far in advance. And this this one had more of uh, like a long investment to it. I hope this stunt that Young Bucks are doing tonight cause them to lose viewers because they deserve to. How do you know it's a stunt and why would they deserve to lose viewers? Thudding chopped has you and I were just talking about a few minutes ago about the. I can tell you right now it's not going to because there are people talking about it who never talk about AEW. I can tell you it's not going to be that way. The countdown to the Young Bucks is oh they got a, a countdown twenty minutes twenty minutes until the uh, Young Bucks are going to do their thing. Shown he's not out of it. Couple shots, maybe a bit half-hearted, but now there's the slick blade. Uh, new look of AEW, not bad. Yeah, I like it way better than just the dark, brooding, plain Jane look that they had for a while. Dynamite 2.0, we got over here. Well, let's reserve judgment on that, Tony, because Penta takes to the skies. Penta with a front flip over the top rope. This guy's been running these ropes and doing so great for years. Penta is such a great luchador. I like him a lot here, but can you imagine if he was like a, a vicious, like the undertaker of luchadors and he came to uh, WWE? Oh my goodness. He's like a, a haunting, like what he was doing in Lucha Underground. That, that dark Penta that he was. We saw that countdown I know they've tried it here, change. here and there, but it, I don't know, not, not quite what I'm, what I'm talking about. That may not be an issue if Copeland can't return to the ring. This change in his outfit is not exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about the whole persona behind it. High in the count, up to eight now. And Copeland's in bad shape, man. Nine. Got nine here, and Copeland on the verge of being counted out. Hey, they almost brought the count out that I was talking about before the show started. And Penta, I think that was a pretty hard landing, Tony. Adam Copeland beats Penta the count. Using that time to recover a little bit. Yeah, that was a good, yeah, you're exactly right. That's a great move by Penta to do that. And I think we're looking too much into a glitch that said hello on Raw. But we still I don't think you're thinking too much into it. I think there's something there. We're scheduled to have to begin with, with the program. With Joe in the world yeah. title with Especially with yeah. how clean their production has been. I don't think the things like that are accidents. Now, if it happened over here, I'd be like, oh, okay, maybe it was just a glitch. Because, you know, it's... The, the production in AEW has, has its uh, its areas of opportunity. But I, I don't think that accidents like that happen in WWE, especially not twice in one night. Let's go. Jimmy John's trying to roll up on us. Edge has been catching a beat down all throughout this. Guys hurt like... Like Copeland is as the champion, you know you got him hurting. I don't blame Penta one bit for what he's doing. I think uh, Copeland, he's on his back right now, but I believe on his back there's an there's an open wound. Adam Edgeland, get up, sure man. You're he getting hurt. From the, uh, diamond plate from the steps early on. There it is. It's definitely some heavy, uh, yeah, it's just losing type thing. Uh, I thought maybe it was. I thought it was though. classy. Uh, they mentioned the WrestleMania was the first under Paul Levesque. Yeah. Oh, Okada is here. Aha. Yeah, they didn't they didn't really advertise that. At least not up to the point that were out there I was uh looking into the show. So it's, that's kind of cool. Okada's going to be in action. The international champion. Copeland maybe Oh. Rough kick connects. 
Copeland goes down in a heap. I think what set everything on that was the fact that Copeland tried to get up and it was really, Anna really Jay's in action tonight. Why do they keep putting her in action, dude? She's, she's taken, barely passable. I guess I guess they think she's pretty or whatever, but trying to get Cope's hand off of the rope so he, the ref didn't have to break the count. But she has nothing going on. They even had her in that uh that like four way for the women's championship. It's like what? How did she get to the the top of the fight card like that? Aren't we still doing the rankings? Or the rankings done? Urging on the rated R superstar. And Tony, it's it's often said that Charles. They can't they can't tell me she's been winning matches on dark or anything because that's not even a thing anymore. And I and I watch Collision. Maybe she's winning on uh, Rampage. And Charleston, South Carolina, both Charleston. Right. One's more close to Appalachia than the other, but I digress. It's digress, but right now it is with you, but with me it's digress. Right now, had to drive that boot into the throat of Adam Copeland. And, uh, Copeland is getting just decimated out here. He's laying on his back and just staring at the lights. He's got a, a kind of a gazed look in his eyes. Probably slowed down his style. Hmm. Penta in the driver's seat, man. Our TNT Championship match continues tonight live on Dynamite. Penta El Serbia. Let's go. A commanding lead on the rated R uh -oh. superstar. Uh -oh. the Penta's still rolling as we come back from commercial break. Copeland. Okay. Not a lot of mustard on that kickout, Taz. No, no. It's not usually how they do it. I, I like this really little change of pace. He is borderline defense. Well, he is defenseless right about now. Don't Look at this. Copeland's just huffing and puffing, man. His brother Ray Phoenix was international champion at one time. So yeah, they're known as the Lucha Brothers in tag team action, but they are great single. Penta's friends. got to put him away now, though. Right now, he's, he's got this well, yeah, slow, like, methodical style he's doing right now, and he needs to During pump it up a little here, bit so he can, Penta if he wants to take this title. Looks like he's just now, waiting so for well, Copeland to get a comeback. He could beat anyone at any time on any night. Now, but Copeland just intercepted Penta, and Penta goes Jeez. down face first. Is this the opening that Copeland needs? A little face buster from. Uh, from yeah, Copeland puts, Excalibur, but he can't really, uh, puts Penta out of action. Look at this. Just laying down. Both down again. They're battling for the TNT title. How cool is this, man? You never thought Can you, you still double count a guy when he's when his Penta foot is outside the, the ring? Right on live TV. It's crazy. Uh, match, I mean, that, you know, you see how uh, ago, we never thought would happen. I mean, Penta's ago, foot is under the ropes there. Can you That's still Copeland. count a guy when their foot is under the ropes? Looking to seize the advantage. Maybe they could charge Interesting. Yep. Oh, yeah. Def oh, boy. Oh, oh, a little different version, a little yeah. modification. What is this? <laughs> Sideways yeah, sharpshooter? The not so sharpshooter? Yeah, that's, that's a big problem for Penta there. The dull shooter. <laughs> I like that modification. Yeah, Copeland. Wrenching down, but Penta. The dull shooter. <laughs> to the bottom rope to force the break. But the damage may have been done, Taz. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Now, an ankle lock here. I think the grip of that modified version Taz was on the ankles, right? The it was. Yeah. Oh. Penta diving forward. Copeland was hanging on, and now Penta. Oh, brother. The stalling drop kick with Copeland in the corner. We all saw that coming. Nothing Copeland could do. The lateral press, and Copeland kicking it. Dang. Out. Copeland got the benefit of the count right there, dude. That looked like it was one, two, Trace. Get him out of here. And the, the attack of Penta all throughout this match. <laughs> the dull shooter. <laughs> Adam Copeland fighting <laughs> defensively the entire night. It's smart to challenge just The sniper in the training. The, <laughs> the unaccurate oh, shooter. <laughs> Penta trying to soften Copeland up to open him up for that arm breaker. Yeah, but Cope, 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 the tables. Now the cross face is locked in on Penta. Got the cross face on Penta right now. Penta, he can see the ropes, but he is just out of reach. Copeland has him anchored. Right oh, there. my now goodness. Wrenches back. Great job by Cope right there. Really wrenching back. That's Rope Break City. Turns That's the, the ropes, that Cope. The bottom rope, Tony. Penta got out of there. Great move. That's a veteran move by Penta because he was in dire straits right there. Well, it's about yeah, I had to go through presence. some neck damage to get that foot up on the ropes. <laughs> Matt presence is the proper term, in my opinion. You got to know where you are at all times, especially when you're caught in any type of a hold, to utilize a rope to break the hold. 
Copeland sent over the top. The right hand blocked. The common Geary was not. Copeland tried to turn the head, but that may have made things worse for him. As he yeah, this is one of the slowest paced matches I've seen uh, Copeland do throughout his entire time, maybe in the last couple years. I don't know what's up with him. He just, just feels like he's not, not like on his best health right now or something. Copeland. Could be thinking Death Valley Driver, maybe on the Didn't get much sleep last floor. night or something. Penta. I've never seen Edge Other this slow in the ball. ring. Oh boy. Uh -oh. It's like every every he's two seconds he's taking a rest. He's Two's leaning on the ropes. Penta. He's laying down. Into the Connects with a thrust kick. Penta. Oh my goodness. Power slam on the apron, splats the back of Penta. Blue Penta is down. Dabu D Dabu Da. A last ditch effort by the rated R superstar Taz. Walk us through it. It's a great rotation of the quick hips right here. He's blue. By Cole, even though you have not a lot of room to work with on that apron, man, it was. I like that Abrahantes came out here and and he's matching the same color scheme as Penta. That's a real thud there. As Penta struggling up his his feet. John Moxley will face Naito Friday. I hope Mox shows up next Wednesday as IWDP Heavyweight Champion. That'd be crazy. Surprisingly, is still down, but well, he did us all a favor. I'm speaking oh, for myself. Okay, but the match continues. Man, some people were booing when Alex got hit. I guess Alex is from West Virginia. I think New Japan will let them do that, though. His feet. That that could be just man. New Japan's been giving Matt all the branches out here, man. Very dangerous territory, high above the ring. You think they'll they'll pull that? What the hell is this? What's going to happen here? Oh my goodness! Penta. It's time. Hooking the heels underneath the arm. Oh, code red. And code red on the neck. Copeland somehow kicks out. Man, a second Copeland away kicks out. Oh my goodness! The a neck. Check the right neck. There. Tony, the Jin, what's up? Penta has been to target the neck of Copeland, and that that code red. You are a who's nightmare? That was the best target yet, and now look at this. Taz. Talking about the wrestler? Oh, crack the, the crack the arm. Penta does it. Out. Wow, he barely kicked out, guys. I mean, those legs lifted. There wasn't. Copeland has been on running on empty for like ninety percent of this match. <laughs> barely is kicked out of everything. In this match, just under ten minutes remaining. It's the reversal. Spear, spear, speared out of the sky. That's done. Adam Copeland wins. They gave Moxley the U.S. title twice. Yeah, but but that's different than the world title. Copeland retains in a in what I would say is the hardest spot match I've ever seen him have. Maybe. <laughs> well, actually, I wouldn't say ever, but. Jeez, man. Talk about a tough fight. There you go. Adam, Adam wins. Right bam, 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 by the rated R superstar Adam Copeland. I mean, he. I mean, when you think about the U.S. title, you you got to know that it, it was made just for things like this, just to get uh, attention on the state side. So that makes sense. But like your world title and having a having a guy walk around with it on AEW, I mean, it could help. But we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll know soon enough. Copeland gets jumped from behind. Big man right there, Big Brody. This is after the battle that Colt just went through. And Brody King, Brody King is destroying God. Adam Edgeland. Into the jaw of Copeland. And Tony, that's right. It'll be House of Black versus Copeland, Mark Briscoe, and Eddie Kingston in 11 days' time. Here comes, here comes uh, Eddie Kingston. Hopefully, Kingston actually gets some shots in this time. His last run in was with a. What the heck? Oh, Willow. Hmm. Hello, Nightingale. Hello, Nightingale. She earned her 
Tony can't send it. When is it today? Wait, what? Can't send it? What do you mean can't send it? Look, she got, she got that, that mist all over her face. Julia had the, the mist loaded up. And now Brody I guess the mist didn't work. Not enough of a hitter or something? I think this save by Willow Nightingale may have been the last thing that Adam Copeland expected, but... A timely save, nonetheless. There you see at the bottom of your screen. Duke Dougie. Briscoe and Kingston versus the House of Black at Dynasty. Plus, Willow Nightingale will challenge Julia Hart for the TBS Championship on April 21st. That is, uh, and right now, I, I will say that it was unexpected to hear Willow's music hit. I thought it was going to be Eddie Kingston. Maybe they were like, Kingston, just take a break. We, we saw how you did it last time. It's all good, man. Just stay back here. Brutal backstage with a uh, lion hook he even has a shirt that says it already <laughs> merchandise baby you know uh i wish i had that shirt remember when aj styles and uh jericho were like oh what were they called y2 aj i think was what they were called i wish i had that shirt that shirt was going for like 300 bucks after they split up like immediately afterwards under the learning it's like tree, the shortest the tag Jericho, team of all time or something <laughs> i will start with the go-go okay i'll knock i wish i had that after that shirt's worth week. some cash then, hook, i will tag you you go in and you dump shane taylor right on his head then you tag shibata shibata you kick lee moriarty you stretch him out you put him in the sleeper it's done if you listen to me and i know you will and if you breathe the rarefied air of chris jericho rarefied air Wait a minute. Nothing but success for us in the future. Wait a minute. Somebody else already says ben. that. Uh, uh, the ben. dude from MLW. Ben. I'll see you guys out there. He said bet. <laughs> what is his deal? It's trust. Trust. What is his deal? I like your necklace. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good luck tonight. <laughs> he talks through the translator. Shibata talks to the translator thing. Lee Moriarty, Shane Taylor, and Olympic medalist Anthony Agogo. That will be our Wu Energy match of the night tonight. And fans, last week we learned that at Dynasty in the finals. Let's the see. He told me he was going to win this match while I was watching it. I would say it looks impossible. I know, right? He was he was destroyed. Ed should be thanking his lucky stars right now, man. Oh, it's time for the footage, guys. That was interesting. <laughs> Why do people keep trying to use Chris Jericho, Jericho to get over? Hook will never be as good as Chris Jericho. <laughs> I don't think he wants to be as good as Chris Jericho. I think he just wants to have a story and be able to show some personality because that's that's one thing that uh that's one thing that Hook could really use is is like a, a storyline, something to do besides just be a guy who says nothing. But gracious in defeat, and they will have part four coming up at Dynasty. But before we get to Dynasty, the footage is coming, guys. Jackson up next. Nicholas Jackson will present never before seen backstage. Yeah, they're just showing the ceiling all night. You notice that? It's it's definitely a production choice at this point. I thought it might have been a mistake at first, but nah. This is this is an ideal. This is what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to show this the ceiling shot between everything that's going on. They could show like cool people in the crowd. They could show people with like a, with like a, an Orange Cassidy shirt or something. Because that's that's a way to advertise, undercover advertise, and also show people loving the merchandise. It's it's a cool way to, to breed that camaraderie and and also to, to let people know if you buy a ticket, you're gonna be on camera. We're gonna we're gonna show you if you come with like a cool glasses or something we're gonna show you we're gonna put you on so that it, it makes a ticket more um it makes a ticket more valuable because you're not just going to see the show you're going to be in the show you know they they should show people not the ceiling <laughs> the ceiling ain't gonna buy a ticket <laughs> yeah pan the crowd you know show show the people in the crowd or zoom in on like your 
uh, your woo energy, your woo energy section, where it's just a bunch of people with woo energy drinks, and they're all going woo or something, you know, uh, show your ticket upgrade of the night where somebody got taken from like high up and now they're in the front row they get to shake hands with their favorite wrestlers or something you could be doing anything man it, it doesn't have to be the ceiling very odd pando's rocking his elite gold oh yeah pando's a different color thanks for pointing that out let's let's get pando some uh some camouflage so pando can easily sneak up on their prey Get a good meal. If I can find Pando. Pando's camouflaged in my own layout. Ninja Turtles. The Ninja Turtles song. There we go. That's a little better. Aaron knows what I'm talking about. Coming back from it. All right, let this is going to be the best time to retweet, I think, guys. Let's like the tweet, retweet the tweet. Let everybody know we're on the streets. We're on these YouTube streets, we're on these Twitch streets. I see Portman hooked it up already. Thank you, Portman. Let's see who else hooked it up. Portman hooked it up. Lord Brother Darkness hooked up. Mark Briscoe, congratulations on winning the Ring of Honor. Finish Viking hooked it up. Last weekend at Supercard, uh, you guys Heartbreak really Beast hooked it up. Goki hooked it up. How do you guys feel? I mean, we're just over a week away from Dynasty. Ooh, where you guys going to be in a six-man tag team match? Well, Renee, Thank you very much. Radio hooked it up. To you. I'm feeling amazing. <laughs> Hey, but simultaneously, let's go, let's go. I'm in pain. I can't lie to you. We had a dog fight, a war. King, how you feeling, dog? Ah, uh, I feel confused right now. I don't know what simultaneously Cold blue means, but uh, I'm beat up, dog, too. But you know what? It's pro wrestling. Ain't hey, you'll be ceiling so three and zero. We gotta do. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay, hey. I love you guys. You know that. It's Adam Edwards. I saw that dog fight you guys had, Ring of Honor. You're good. Okay, I'm as good as I can be right now. I don't know if you saw Brody. Julia Hart, they tried to jump on me, so I just want to make sure we are good. We are good for Dynasty. No, I, okay. That's a great idea, actually, for a head of Dynasty, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about this? Next week on Dynamite, you put that TNT Championship on the line against Willow Nightingale. No, no, she no, gonna no. Oh. Your ass, man. That's do it. We were saying so quick. No. Please no. do it. Brody, I saw you beating up on Adam. Julia, try to get me. Not enough damage this time. My eyes are good. So, Dynamite next week? What do you say? We team up. I got an idea. Before Dynasty, before the three of us, the the rated chicken hawks. I don't the know. Rated that. chicken hawks. That up. Before we take out the House of Black. Willow, what do you say? You and me, Brody King, Julie Hart, next week on Dynamite. Yeah. 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 Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, man, I like the original idea. I like Stokely's idea. I, you, I said you smell like Burger King in Newport. I apologize. I just did not have said that publicly. We good? Burger King and Newport. Well, they're gonna have to workshop the name of the trio. What is going on? You want to talk about unexpected matchups, Taz? Yeah, but yeah, I'm sure there's little parts of the crowd you can film. Certain people. Oh, there's people there. Yeah. Fans, right now, I understand that. Oh, here we go. Where we are gonna hear from our executive vice president. Here we go, guys. And Nicholas Jackson. Can't believe they didn't save this for the end of the show. You could have could have had people locked in. All right. I think the TV audience is ready to see this uh, footage. So without further ado. Here we go, ado, guys. It's time. Hey, hang on, hang on. Wait, wait. Give the people a little bit of context. First. You want me to set the table yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What's wrong right. with that? I'm not saying AEW, there's anything wrong with it. It's just a funny line. We have coming up April 21st, AEW Dynasty. The finals, mm. Matthew, of this tag team tournament is FTR versus the Young Bucks. And it, it got me to think. The last time we wrestled these guys was at All In. I still have some wounds that they, they haven't really healed. Oh, gosh. Jimmy Johns, really? Jimmy Johns is, is watching. 
They know what's up. Good, good, good play, Jimmy Johns. I like it. I know some people at AEW night. Nice finish. Who wins this match will probably be coined as the greatest tag team of this generation. Right before that match, Nicholas, uh, there was a incident backstage involving two individuals. The first being the scapegoat in this entire situation, Jack Perry. Uh, Jack Jack's Perry. a lovable kid also from Southern California, just like us. And today, you know, now to think about it, he kind of reminds me a lot of us at his age. And someone actually once said about Jack, uh, if you've got a problem with Jack Perry, chances are uh, you're the problem. Uh, and the other individual... Uh, you know what? The other individual tried to make this entire show about himself. Matter of fact, this individual happens to be good friends with FTR, which got me thinking, maybe FTR were the masterminds behind this entire thing. You can't say that. He can't, he, can't, he can't say that, right? Like that, you don't know that to be a fact, so you can't just spread rumors. They were behind the whole thing. Like FTR. This. You're right. You're right. It's very, <laughs> they very, did it. Very unprofessional. Now, while we were dealing with the fallout from this incident, uh, I think it's safe to assume and say that we were thrown off of our game. Uh, we had to put our EVP caps on and we had to neglect being professional wrestlers. Uh, the, the locker room was in disarray. Uh, there were respectable wrestling journalists who needed answers. Uh, we had no time to hydrate. We had no time to even pray, damn it. So I think if you look in the, 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 the history books, yeah. Yeah, you're going to see something. You're going to see the FTR. You probably guys, should they, follow they, pray they with, the, the with the words. At all in London. Beep it. But, if you had to ask me or anybody else in this room, I think we could all agree that there should be a giant asterisk next to that FTR victory. Oh, really? But after opening up all these 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 wounds, we're talking about everything. The incident itself, it, it's not even the worst part. You'll see in a second. We'll show you the footage. It, it, it's short, and it, and it resembles more of a, a like a, a high school scrap. Um, but I would argue this. I would argue not not that it was a short a short incident but the ramifications that came out of the incident. It, it threatened to take down our biggest show of all time, but damn it, we're lucky that it didn't. With that being said, let's Matthew, go. let's roll the tape. Roll the tape, roll the footage. Here we go. I see Jack Perry. I see the refs. I see CM Punk. It's actually CM Punk. Oh, Jack said, he said, what? And he's got his head cocked to the side. Samoa Joe's in the background. He looks like he knows something's up. Oh, Jack Perry got in his face. There's no sound, by the way. He's like, can you believe this guy? <laughs> it's a little longer conversation than I expected it to be between Jack Perry and CM Punk right now. Oh, he pushed him. He said, do something about it. Oh, he pushed him, and then he grabbed him. He got him in a front guillotine choke and then threw him. And some guys uh, got CM Punk off of him. Is that Cassius Ono? Looks kind of like Ono, doesn't it? And then Jeff Hardy. Oh, maybe that's why Jeff Hardy's been getting just super-duper destroyed all the time. What? Yeah, there, you, there you have okay. it. Okay. That looked... Uh, that wasn't the worst part about this entire incident. Not, not even That looked close. very similar to what uh, I thought happened. For me, the worst part Roll about this whole thing Roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> creating a wrestling show. Naming a wrestling show. Filling the building with hmm. the most people that have ever witnessed Was a wrestling show. Was that supposed to make Punk show, look bad? I don't know. Only to be so distracted by something so Let's hear stupid. hear what they have to say about it that you lose on your big night. And then at the end, FTR, you have the balls to stick your hands out and ask us to shake your damn hands. At Dynasty, we're not shaking hands with you, you pricks. Be ready. Scapegoat, he's got a scapegoat shirt on. 
Well, Tez, we talked about it earlier in the night. Sometimes, it wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't fake. It was real, real footage. They didn't, Speaking of FTR, they didn't do any wackiness. I mean, their, their acting needs work, of course, but I thought it was okay. Uh-oh. Now they're marching to the ring. Man, there's a lot of things that... Well, face just got ruffled up here. It's Scott and Dawson. You can see the looks on the faces of these two men here. Yeah, they usually come out tabs and they well, mic time. The fans and... Yeah. And now Cash they're at... And, uh... For a microphone and <laughs> Cash is wearing a, a Bart Simpson shirt. What did it say? So, why? Why, why, why are we showing this? What... What are you two hoping to accomplish by showing this? Other Let's go. Cody versus The Rock, WrestleMania 41. Maybe. We shall see. I don't know about everybody else here, but I That's exactly how Punk described it. Yeah, I know. I didn't really see anything this. different besides, like, he pushed him first, and then he, then he choked him. Everybody back there. We need speech Us. bubbles, Kelly. Everybody <laughs> in that back. We are ready to move on. We are ready to put this <laughs> in the yeah, past. Yeah. I am done with this. But instead of talking about revolution, this is the part that will go on for 20 minutes. That makes no sense. Wembley, yeah, year, it's weird. Glazy, welcome back, by the way. Good to see you again, man. Best shows Been a little ever. while. We're showing videos from eight months ago. Why? Because Rod and Todd Flanders can't let go that they lost to FTR. Yeah, so I, now, thought, I thought it was going to show, like, CM Punk me. being a liar or something, but. EVP caps and listen. That's ex Dynasty, what he said happened. <laughs> we have to beat you, and it's not for legacy. Not like he just started swinging on him or anything. Or it's like they, they had a conversation, the and then you could it's see. I am sick of you petty little bitches. Something happened. He took it there. CM Punk was composed before that. It's not like so he was. Uh, he came back there all mad and fuming and swinging. For, huh? I don't know. Every they have or, or I don't think that accomplished much, but if they're going to use it in the angle, at least it's something. At least it's some sort of story. Will be out of a job. They let us all know it's better than the norm. AEW probably wouldn't exist. And you know the crazy thing, the scary thing is, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Because without, uh, without the Young Bucks... I still might be shaving his back. <laughs> but, but for real, but seriously, <laughs> but because of the young bucks, we have something that makes them sick. We have something Drewski, that they cannot yeah, get over. Because of the young, they'll never admit it, but because of the young bucks, now FTR has eclipsed them as the absolute best tag team on this planet. <laughs> And at one time, and at one time, you guys cared about these three letters. You cared about AEW, but somewhere along the way, whether it was greed or whether it was jealousy, you lost that. And now three other letters have taken over. The only thing you care about is what's best for the EVPs. And so if, it's, uh, if it takes my last breath on the backs of FTR, on the back of Samoa Joe, on the back of Swerve Strickland, on the back of uh, Daniel Garcia, Darby Allen, Willow Nightingale, every single man and woman back there who come to work every week and want to be here on our backs, we will build this. We will continue to build this place, and not just for us. It ain't just a selfish ambition. We're building it for the future of all professional wrestlers. So they have a choice. They can make a decision. They can make a living. But more importantly than that, we're building this for every single man, woman who goes every day to we every work every day to work, week in, week out, and spends their money on one ticket, on one ticket spends their hard-earned money on one ticket to get lost, to get lost in our drama, to get lost in our action. We are doing this for you. Hmm. And if the Young Bucks, if the Young Bucks don't want to be part of that AEW, grab your ball, go home. We got this. Yep, that's what I was saying, Drewski. I was saying I guarantee it doesn't lose viewers like normal. <laughs> Yeah, at least they're trying. To, that's what I was saying, Portman. That that is better than the norm. At least they're doing something with it. At least it's not just too. some weird shot too. in the dark. But uh, 
This ain't about At least Wembley. it's story. At least it's drama. At least it's something to get emotional about it. You know, not just this a match. Oh, AEW. who's this gonna be the best? The I'm the I best. Love. No, the I'm the best. That I love. But more specifically, this is about the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Two That's teams much better in. than the norm. One team walks FTR out Dynamite. <laughs> team in the world. Two teams walk in, one team walks out as the first ever three-time AEW World Tag Team Champions. Young Bucks, you may have built this foundation, but brick by brick, shingle by shingle, we will put the roof on top of this house. <laughs> Just to blow that son of a bitch right back off. Top guys, out. Wow. Very impact get him from FTR Dynasty cannot get here soon enough and fan <laughs> That was the way. footage that Don't Tony Khan was scared for his life for <laughs> no, nah, I don't think that that was it I think it was something afterwards because remember he said that um, he said after that happened he uh, That he told Tony Khan that it's a clown show or that he's a clown and he quits or whatever That's why I put I quit on the thumbnail <laughs> Um, you notice how I have Tony Khan hiding behind the dynamite logo <laughs> on the thumbnail as well. <laughs> I try to make my thumbnails like funny every now and then, not all the time, because I, I don't want to, I don't want to just become like a comedic person who's always poking fun at stuff. But when it's, when it's worth doing, I got to do it. I'll be right back. Is running out. If this is my last year, this will be the most epic of my career. The final year of his already incredible career. Danielson has had some major victories over the last few months, but also some devastating losses as well. Now he faces the ultimate test of whether he still has what it takes to compete at the highest level against Will Ospreay. Brian is outmatched by Will Ospreay's age, strength, Overall aerial assault, and the only chance the American Dragon may have to pull out a victory is to take the match to the ground. Can Danielson successfully ground? The oh God, here we go. <laughs> the the serious segment, and then they cut to Excalibur's goofy, goofy lucha lucha face during stuff that's supposed to be 
some something emotional, something serious, something that we're all looking forward Ladies to, and then they show him with his goofy face. Oh, he's here? Oh, wow, they didn't advertise him. At least not up until the point where I was looking at the advertisements. Elevated! <laughs> Is there anybody who loves their theme song more than an Osprey? I don't know. But I love it, too. Uh, you can't hear what Punk says, uh, so that's not fair to Punk. Yeah, it's it's not fair to anybody, but that's how that footage is, though. It's not like they they took out the audio. I just think there is no audio on footage like that. So it, it is what it is. I just want to talk. I asked Tony. He said you got five minutes. TV time's expensive. So there's this TV time's expensive. Right? There's this rumor that Yo, he said fix the I'm roof is the FTR. Points. Kelly Kelly doesn't miss. Kelly Kelly hits the, the uh, mark that Kelly's searching for. You, I have no idea where these, <laughs> this conversation has come from because I'm one of the only guys that are traveling every single week to the UK and America. Eight, ten hour flights every single week. And I am delivering... Oh, hear that? Fix the roof, FTR. Delivering some of the best professional wrestling matches. Oh, you saw him screaming at Tony? I didn't see bro. Tony. I must have missed him. I was looking for like Samoa Joe and stuff, and normally, so I, I might have messed up there. Normally, I wouldn't rise to this type of bait, but seeing as the guy that said it is only in the position he is in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. Oh, wait a minute. You are in no position to tell me what the grind is all about, my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for. <laughs> Grinding on the boss's daughter, jeez. And a gentle reminder that you do not throw stones and it's an assassin with a machine gun. Now, Brian, I just hear what you said there, my friends, and you said... Yeah, we got Triple H callouts. You, which I am. I'm faster than you, which I am, and the only way you ever Puck was literally being held back, so how was Tony in fear for his life? Yeah, he was he was being held back by I think it was Cassius Ono and I think it was Jeff Hardy. But healthier men have tried and failed. Younger men have tried We could all agree the situation is Sean Spears' fault. Sean Spears is whispering in his ear. Danielson. You are a yeah, cowboy. For sure, game, man. Son. And I cannot, I cannot say it anymore. I cannot call Yeah, Mary, that's what I thought, that it happens after that clip, yeah. Until after Dynasty, until after I pin you in that ring, because these people have paid a lot of money to see the best wrestlers go at it. This... This is AEW, where the best wrestle. And it's my time, it's my time, Mr. Danielson, to show every single person what I'm about, what I bring to the table, and why I am the ace of all elite wrestling. Brian Danielson, you find out Sunday, the 21st of April, why my name is Will Ospreay, and I am on another level. Will Ospreay, da, 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 la, 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 la. April 21st Dynasty, live on Elevated. A true clash of I want him to be my personal trainer. <laughs> Brock, so welcome. And also at Dynasty, Willow Nightingale will challenge Julia Hart for the TBS Championship. I'm kind of sad that after this, we're probably going back to a 17 minute rope running. Oh, wait, there's still more. We're still getting a little bit more story. Nice. More story, more more promos, more, more packages to tell us why to care. Not saying to soak the show with them, but man. I was hoping so bad we wouldn't just hit somebody's music and they run out here and wrestle for 17 minutes. I peel back your mask. 
and show you you carry more oh yeah and i'm not gonna have a match smiles there. and rainbows <laughs> hey you got his money that's for and sure that was a good promo from i like osprey on the mic you man know what i'm capable of yet you keep coming back for more i shall kill your spark turn your smile into a frown and make sure you never touch my crown well, that's a rhyme i am the princess of the black throne keeper of secrets and it is my destiny to stay the tbs champion i don't think so i think you're losing that title because they, they've already set it up to where uh, Mercedes is coming after that title. So uh, they, they already have a built-in story with her injury uh, from Willow and all that. And how Willow, like, they, they called it audible to put the title on her to begin with and all that. So I don't think Julia has that same type of storytelling opportunity. Up the hook. Oh my god, a very, very lukewarm response. No, nah, I wouldn't even say lukewarm. That's... What is that movie where the guy keeps, every time he gets in the shower, the the, uh, the shower's super cold and he's like, ah! <laughs> he's like trying to cover it up. <laughs> what is that movie? It's like a famous movie. Uh... Oh man. He's like, ah! <laughs> Oh my god, it's Hook. <laughs> Joining him from Winnipeg, Chris Jerry Curl. Weighing 225 pounds, Lion Heart Chris Jericho. The thing that got me that Jericho was saying earlier to Hook and Shibata was he basically, I just my opinion, he kind of gave out the game plan. Wonder why he waits so long to come out. Watch his team to do. Great point. Great point. That's some cool looking pyro. Groundhog Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kelly, yeah. Every day he forgets how cold the shower is, so he's like, ah! <laughs> yes. Yes, Kelly, thank you. We should watch that. That's That'd be a good Cinema Monday movie. I, I love that movie. I haven't seen it in a while. How did you remember that, Kelly? <laughs> well, Osprey is my trainer. You will lift. He will lift that five-pound weight. Show me your strength. Put down that pizza. Push the limit. Five pounds or bust. Doesn't want to get gas before he gets in the ring. Pounds. It's time for our ciabatta bread. Eat the bread. How crazy would it be if this is the guy who loved bread? If it wasn't Kojima, if it was him. <laughs> then he could have his own bread brand called Shibata Bread. You know, just basically translating to one another. Right. Talking about strategy, not texting, translating. True. And their opponents, Lee Moriarty, Anthony Agogo, and Shane Taylor. Dude, Anthony Agogo's here. I should put him on the, the thumbnail. We're seeing Anthony Agogo, guys. Remember him? Yeah, Shibata Bread. <laughs> Shibata Bread Baker. Yeah, put them both to the same tag team. <laughs> I'm so glad to see... Uh, to see... Uh, uh, Oh god, what's his name? I forgot his name. The song is in my head right now. Super dangerous hands does a go go have. A go go, yeah, Anthony a go go. Not a great guy, a go go. We got him right here. Not a good guy. Seven Remember this guy? Look, this is what he looks like. Anthony a go go. Since June of 2021. The thing is, with a go go, he got into this. There he is. Feels like he's better than everybody. I would put a prediction on this. Um, but I think it's fairly. Actually, you know what? Let's let's actually do it. Fans, you can experience new energy. To be the man, you need the can. 
Fuel your Woo Energy. Days and limousine riding nights with Woo Energy, the official energy drink on all elite wrestling as Jericho takes down Moriarty. Okay, uh, uh Hook? Quick, team smart. Team Hook yeah, or... Shoulder block right there by Jericho you on Mor Moriarty. But locks off there by Jericho as Moriarty tries to clear or, out. Uh, goes for the pin. Shane Taylor Productions, Taylor STP. The they make their own, like, automotive Jericho oils, I think. Sending Moriarty back to the ropes. All right, predictions are open, guys. STP Jericho stands for Shane out. Taylor Productions. Right out, right out or promotions or something. Pick and hook. With those short <laughs> Christian Jericho. You mix together. If them mixed together would be a great superstar. Yeah, definitely was, but yeah. a go go came out as we just saw from Collision attacked hook. Bluegrass and is by far his Richard. best promo in Jericho AEW. Who, uh, and, uh you talking about Ryder, Will Ospreay, Bluegrass? For Lee. Team Go Go. <laughs> Team Went Went. Oh, jeez. You land on your buttocks like that, your tailbone, man. It's rough, and Shibata just tagged himself in. I think Shibata's just raring to go. He sees an opening, he sees a path to victory. <laughs> I think Jericho wanted to tag hook, and Shibata's like, no, I'm coming in. And so already he's not on the same you know, page, I guess. Yeah, that was a good promo. I liked it, and, and it put forward the pay-per-view. It's not just a, a rah-rah, I'm here, I like this, I feel good, you know, stuff that we already know. Welcome to Shibata's world. Yeah, Shibata starts him with that. Oh, my goodness. Lee Moriarty getting his back cracked. Not by a licensed chiropractor. Slips out of the way. Uh-oh. And now Big Shane Taylor... Entering the match. Ed should have had two of those energy drinks before he came out. Yeah, dude. He was so low energy. That, that match was weird to me. I hope he's okay. Seemed very, uh... A couple weeks ago, talking about his... I don't know. What is that? What is it called when it's like... You're not acting like yourself. Un... Not unbecoming. Uh, uncharacteristic. There you go. Uncharacteristic. That's the word. I agree. Ah, Dustin Rhodes is still getting that match tonight. Lethargic is a, another word for like what he was. Yeah. Hope he's okay. You know, sometimes. Sometimes matches like that are a chilling vision of things to come. I hope he's all right. <laughs> Christian Jericho would be epic. Yo, they should be a tag team. You imagine the terror they could cause? Christian and Jericho. Oh my goodness, dude, they would eat people alive. I'm down with it. You might have accidentally created the best thing they could do right now. Yeah, that hurts like the dickens, as you can imagine, but I promise you... You might have, uh, you might have created point. penicillin, remember? <laughs> penicillin, like, the saved the world, and it was an accident. What did it cure? Like, polio or something? Penicillin cured something that was, like, killing everybody, and some guy just found it on accident. He was like, oh, wait, what? It works? <laughs> He feels like he's such a good wrestler. He doesn't necessarily need to resort to using his hands. Yeah. Not you know, kidding. A ring name right Jericho that, considered really when he first started was Chris he Christian. UK and, oh, also and Jack and Action? <laughs> Jack so Action sounds... Yeah, very, very I don't know. I wouldn't type that in the internet. Yeah, I think it was like polio or something. Something crazy that mold cured. How crazy is that, man? We almost got taken out, and what saved us was something that nobody wants to see. What did you accidentally do? You made Chris Jericho. You made Christian Jericho. Do it. They could be just a terror, man. They could be so fun to watch. Can you imagine? I want to see that now. I want that to be a, the plan yesterday. Oh, yeah, we're still getting that champagne toast. One of the things I can always say about Dynamite is it's so... Um, I feel like it's the... You know that guy that was just at WrestleMania who got RKO'd, uh, I Show Speed, uh, people like that, like uh, Kai Sinat, where like they're shooting off fireworks in their house and just doing wild stuff. It's like... It's that car crash type of viewing where you... you never know what's going to happen to the point where it's like i got to see this dude what what is going to happen here i feel like dynamite has that feel to it and 
there's a way to embrace it that they're not quite cashing in on, I feel. I think I think it's there, but they don't realize it. Oh, but oh, ho, ho. oh man. <laughs> Taylor peppering the jaw of I don't promote trolling. <laughs> Wait, what? So we all hate CM Punk or a boycott in WWE? What? <laughs> He needs a lifeline. He needs a tag out to either Shibata or Chris <laughs> There was Jericho nothing that was going to be in that footage that was going to make me hate CM Punk because he, no matter what, the guy has, um, he has some good uh, insight. Believing too much in one person is is dangerous, but like some of the stuff he says is, is stuff that everybody should hear. I feel at least. So I'm always going to tune in and try to listen to some of the stuff he says. And I'm not going to agree with all of it. And I'm not going to think he's some sort of voice of the voiceless all day. But he does have some good insight that, that some people could use, I think. He's got he's got some good advice. Moriarty's in no man's land. Oh yeah, what a shot, Shibata. That was some shot by Shibata. Yeah, Moriarty has no. Shibata's out. Shibata's out here dressed like a young boy all day. 1944 penicillin helped uh, bacterial infections from World War II. I see. Yeah, I think it was something crazy that it, it ended too. I think that that probably was it because. Like a big portion of uh, big portion of the the force that was fighting was the males of uh, oh my God Shibata kicked Jericho in the in the head. Oh no! Jack Perry is still technically with AEW. Yeah, he's not fired. He's not fired. He's just out of action, and this is probably a way to bring it back. And he's probably going to be with the elite. It's probably going to be Jack Perry, Okada, and the the Jackson brothers. Sounds like a cool crew to me. I'm down with it, man. Just do interesting things. One of my biggest problems with AEW is I'm not interested. You know, I want to be interested. That's how you get people to come back. Why are people going to tune back in if it's just? wrestling matches i feel like they're doing that more now and, and this is what's creating better shows they're not getting the viewership because they've already ran a lot of people off but it, they'll get them back it's a marathon it's not a sprint shibata's getting destroyed over here moriarty's pinning shibata wow Wow, they let Lee Moriarty pin Shibata. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Jack Perry's been in New Japan. He's got a match in uh, on Friday. He's got a match on Friday for New Japan. I forget what it's called, like Battle in Seattle or something. I don't know. Jericho's leaving the ring after the loss. He's got a temper. Dang, nobody bet on STP. Everybody, everybody lost on that one. I'm sorry, I gotta do it. You know what? I'll, I'll be. I'll be cool about it. I won't take you guys' points this time, but. Earlier tonight, Samoa Joe was attacked by. Swerve Think of this as a freebie. <laughs> informed, however, that Samoa Joe is still medically cleared to compete tonight. Now, Dustin, I know how important this eliminator match is for you—a future shot potentially at that world title. Does this change your strategy at all? Absolutely not. We know what's on the line here. You heard me last week when I said I've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Right now, I believe the time for talking is over. 
We are in Charleston, West Virginia. The natural is in the house here for business, baby. If you can't get down for that, I don't know what to tell you. But I tell you this, Charleston, West Virginia, grit, work ethic, passion, and glory. Look, I'm getting shout outs. Do every single week in and out. And tonight will be no different. We understand Samoa Joe does get him blood dust. Okada's here. Wow. Samoa Joe had some comments on social media. We'll get that to get to that in a moment. It's Okada. What's he gonna do? Oh yeah, he comes out of the middle. I cheat? From I cheat. <laughs> I cheat, Japan. Dustin needs Mama Rhodes. <laughs> I didn't think we'd hear Mama Rhodes tonight. We got it. We're in there. QZ, welcome. So as if the stakes weren't already high enough for the natural Dustin Rhodes, that is also looming over this match, Tony. Teddy Hart, what are you talking about? Teddy Hart says AEW's dead. How's it dead? <laughs> what are you talking about? Did I miss it? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And it was exactly what you what you thought it would be, and it was exactly the way that CM Punk said it happened. <laughs> there was nothing uh, outlandish about it. But they at least used it to to further an angle, which which is something that I was worried they wouldn't do. I was worried it would just be like a victory lap again. You know how the Bucks I mean, like to do that. None have made more of an impact in such a short time than the Rainmaker. J Dog, what's up, man? Somebody, uh, some nobody pinned Shibata, not even the youngsters, but no name pinned him. He's, he's Lee Moriarty, man. Come on. Come on, it's Lee Moriarty. I think Shibata is going to be mad about that. I, I hope he's mad about that. This could be the start of a good story. I, I hope that's where it's going, man. Okada blocking this dude. Who is this dude? Here, I'm gonna put Idris. He kind of looks like a like a white Idris, or actually no, he looks like a white Malik kind of. Anyway, right now in trouble. Look at this. Oh, this guy's done. Oh my God! Crack the neck for that respect. Pinned him. Lee Moriarty pinned him. You know what? Remember the guy who comes out? He's, he he wears a baseball jersey. He wears a a lucha mask with a cat face on it. Wears some suspenders that he always has down. The guy with 50 different gimmicks. That dude. I'm not kidding. Guy who can't figure out what gimmick he wants, so he just does everything and looks whack <laughs> doing it. Two That's done. Okada wins. Squiggity squash is right. Mama Rhodes. Goki knows. I mean, which brings so much more impact when you hit someone like that. Okada's uh, finisher needs an upgrade, though, man. It looks so out of place here. People are doing the craziest maneuvers, and then all the, and then all of a sudden, it's like the most powerful move is a clothesline. I accept your challenge. Oh, he's accepting Pax challenge. I will see you at Dynasty. Okada not mincing words, accepting the challenge. Come out here. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Yes, Pac. I forgot Pac was even back, dude. And this is my favorite guy. <laughs> Here he comes. Look, he got more of a reaction than Okada did. Yeah, this is going to be a great, great clothesline. I mean, a great, a great match, I think. Yeah, Pack is back. Pack is the first challenger for Okada's uh, international championship that he won off of Eddie Kingston. Uh-oh, look out behind you. It's the Bucks. Oh, dude, come on. Yeah, Okada needs to use his, his like, uh, his 
uh, submission maneuver, the money clip. He needs to use that instead. The, the clothesline just doesn't look like anything here. It's like you got people launching nukes and you come out with like a BB gun. It's like, oh yeah, look at my BB gun. Okada could be thinking punctuation mark. Yeah, here it comes. Gotta be careful. Yo, they're actually chanting CM Punk. What? I never thought this would happen. Dude, this is really a low uh This is really a low time for uh for AEW man. Even their their diehard ticket buyers are chanting CM Punk, dude. This is a very low time and, and it, it happens. There are ebbs and flow in wrestling. Okada with the chair. Crack in the back of FTR. A shot across the spine for Dax as well. FTR and Pac versus Bucks and Okada. Yeah, that's that's what it's looking like. Since when? What the heck did I miss? Hey man, they've been doing work. They've been doing work. They haven't been getting a lot of ratings, but their shows have been better. It's been better than the last couple months. Especially since they stopped having Adam Cole out here every week. Now watch, it's going to be Adam Cole. The next segment's going to be Adam Cole, now that I said that. You know what I mean, the Undisputed Kingdom or whatever. Ever since they stopped having the Undisputed Kingdom out here every week, it's been better shows. They're, they're so unbelievable as, as like, a credible threat to anybody. Yep, Pac versus Okada. That's what's happening. Big Rude, what's up, man? Oh, you're Big Rud today. Big Rud. Big Rud, your taker. Na, 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 na. Things are heating up here in AEW as the crowd is silent. Super card of honor. The Bang Bang Gang. They put out the open challenge. <laughs> this dude, Excalibur, could not. He could not get a break out of here. He's trying so hard. He's singing that uh that Lincoln Park song. You know the the Universal Memory Card song. I tried so hard and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. That song you never want to sing when you don't have a memory card on your PlayStation. Guys, let's get these thumbs up up. I, I see, I see uh, a lot of people have not left a thumbs up tonight. Let's do it, man. Number one. We make it happen. Darby Allen's dreams along with his little ankle. Oh, Ooh. Behind door number two. We have us successfully defending the Ooh. ring of honor six man championships. Oh, oh, oh don't forget about the most important one, number three. What was oh, it? this one is definitely my favorite. When the <laughs> world witnessed Switchblade Ooh. put the biggest, baddest beating on right. Billy Gunn that you ever did see. And you know what? what? I love this so much. I feel like doing that again Do on again. Rampage. Oh, the not against, yeah, not against Billy. No, no, not against Billy. I don't think he'd survive that. Mm. There's always somebody there, so why don't you two go and find me somebody, line them up, and I'll knock it out of the park as oh, I always I see do. What you did there. Find me and somebody to beat up. Hmm. We got two words for you. Guns up. <laughs> go find me somebody. It's probably going to be Max Caster, right? Oh, Pac versus Cassidy? Maybe if Pac gets the title, but uh, I don't think that's happening. Remember, that's the, uh, Pac had the title at first, then then Cassidy got it from him, and then Cassidy like never let it go until he was on his deathbed. When you show CM Punk on your program, you should expect to hear his name chanted. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's time for the Ninja Turtles theme. I wonder who they're going to get for Jay. These rampage segments are so funny to me, dude. Uh, hey, uh, the sky, it's, it's cloudy today. That makes me think that I should fight somebody on rampage, uh, named Cl Claudio. 
Claudio, I'm fighting Claudio. Like, it's so funny, these Rampage segments are like, what, dude? That's, what is the meaning of this? <laughs> I'll be right back. Let's go. Yeah, it's so weird, man. It's that where's my hot dog booking? I always call it where's my hot dog because it's like the equivalent of the cameras are backstage and everybody's having you've seen it happen in WWE before, and that's where I got it from. So I'm not saying it's a it's a inherently AEW pro problem, but it's you go backstage, everyone's at a at a picnic, and somebody's hot dog is missing. And they're like, where's my hot dog? And then they turn around and there's a guy with like ketchup on his face. And he's like, mmm. And he's got his mouth full. And then the guy who got his hot dog stolen is like, I'll see you on SmackDown or whatever. It's like, dude, that is the worst booking. Like, what? Where's my hot dog? Oh, that's a match now. No, it's not a match. It's not good storytelling. And you, you messed ago. up. Please welcome that's lazy. Thunder Rosa. And that's that's where I coined the phrase. I think it was Otis or something who did that, right? And then I think like Kevin Owens got squirted with ketchup or something. Just just that type of stuff, champion, dude. Tony but it's even Storm. worse because they're not even spending money on ketchup or hot dogs or anything. They're just they're just skipping the hot dog. They're like, oh, I'm gonna fight you because I'm gonna fight you. Come on, man. You got something better than that, or you shouldn't be on TV, right? Tony, thank you so much for coordinating this beautiful champagne toast you have requested this time there we the go floor is yours we can what kind of champagne do we have here do we get it cut? is it the finest can i have a little one too here we'll get one to thunder first it's Thank rainy you. i will also take one all right tony storm the floor is yours toast away yeah at least they're telling some stories tonight at least they're, they're giving us a little bit a little bit of the bubbly oh wow time is tony storm Damn Wait, she oh, smashed her. Man, I, I she know, jumped man. her. She didn't even oh, let her drink. We saw Thomas Tony Storm last week. Shibati, she did not seem like she wanted any oh, part of Thunder Rosa. Of course she did, and that's why, that's why the cheap shot. Listen, Thunder Rosa's proud of her heritage. She's proud of her paint. And look. Oh, Who's this? Oh, Deanna Perrazzo. Coming out, I mean, it gets better late than never for Deanna, but the damage done by Timeless Tony Storm, the champion. She she put a towel on Thunder's face and oh, so get your hands off me. Oh. I mean, Deanna was trying to help. Oh. Did she say F you? Between Deanna Perrazzo and Thunder Rosa, both men, or both women, excuse me. Both men. Uh oh. Excalibur's gonna get canceled for misgendering someone. It's time, Excalibur. Uh oh, wait a minute. We got Booker T shout outs. What a clunky situation. This was so clunky. You ever had champagne thrown in your eyes? No. All right. 
Brutal. Shocking. At least they have time. This is Anna J. Little oh, baby love short and short and my little baby love short and bread. It's brutal, it burns you, and I'm telling you that the face faint in the eyes. Yeah, right, we got Mariah May. Got that in my eyes as well. That's another story as well. Oh, wow. Well, Anna J. That's going to be one on one with Mariah May. Mariah, she had a big weekend of her own competing on Supercard of Honor this past Friday night. Yeah, a very clunky over. transition. Well, very well. clunky. Uh, of stardom situation Japan. here and now mariah let's Anna go going one -on -one i put a prediction on this dynamite. but it's game over Energy has hasn't won a dang thing in forever young ladies here trying <clears> to jockey for position and mariah with the experience at advantage on anna J. to a footwork comes into play when you're in a lockup situation like that if you cross your feet you fall you get dropped oh anna Wow, she ducked out the what kind of slap Mariah. was that? We've seen Taz as one heavy hitter in the women's division. Like right now. Jay with the weirdest little weak well, slap I've ever seen. Maybe ever seen. You. Oh, there's another one now. There you go. All right. That was Anna a little better. Exchange these overhand chops. <laughs> well, those are fastballs coming right over the plate, Tony. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look at this. I, I love that Anna's just not wasting any time. Yeah, Anna stepping up. Testing the jaw of Mariah May. Oh, nice trip up. there Except by the Mariah. Good sidestep and trip by Mariah. That was well done. And Mariah. Oh, speaking of the sidesteps. And Anna coming over that top, that neck breaker. Good job okay. by Anna J. Yeah, Mariah. Oh, flipping neck, neck breaker. Turned around on her by Mariah May. <laughs> As, oh, swing it on. I think you're right. Oh, I think you're right. Oh, her with that. Now. Smart right there for Anna J. Not to waste time. Hook for a vertical suplex, but it didn't work. Yeah. Mariah dropped her hips, got underneath Anna Jay, just carried her to the corner. You know, it was a week ago. It's a good time to let you guys know. If you appreciate what I'm doing here, please consider chipping in however you can. We've had a, got a couple people give some bits today, but uh, no tips and no subscriptions either. So please make sure you guys... Uh, Brings Anna down with the if you enjoy this, if you're having fun, if you like this hangout, if you like what I do here, please consider ways. supporting it however you can, guys. Is. And, you know, I mean, that, that experience in Japan, Taz, following in the footsteps of Timeless Tony Storm. Please and thank you, and thank you in advance if you're going to do that. Very easy ways to do it, and... Willow Nightingale taking on, on YouTube, you can uh, also do things like tip. Tipping me helps me to continue paying the bills, continue keeping this stream alive, and continue giving you guys what you're enjoying right now. So please think about it. Think about it, consider it, and do it. Just do it. Crowd went silent. Of course, man. They have no reason to care about either, either of these girls, especially not Anna Jay. I mean, in, in Mariah May's case, they have a reason to, to kind of care because she's attached to somebody who's making them laugh. But overall, what do we know? It dropped Anna, but it also hurt Mariah. What do we know? She's a girl who likes Tony Storm. Times. You know, it, you can rock yourself. Okay. Like, is that a story? I like somebody. You know what I heard? It's a story if you have a movie like The Notebook or something, but it's not a story if that's all you ever see. <laughs> Breakfast burritos. Nice, man. Take a picture. Dinging overhand chops. Yeah, I thought Booker T was the worst commentator. Why would you take? Why would you take uh, terms from him? <laughs> the best commentator is taking terms from the worst commentator. What a weird world we live in. It's almost like he's not the worst commentator. It's almost like he does have good sayings and does have memorable uh, calls that he does and stuff. They come back out on the floor, like and he would kick that head off of Excalibur yeah, too in real life. <laughs> in a wrestling match between Excalibur and Booker T, I wonder who would win. You know? One of them knows a lot more about wrestling. Like actual wrestling, not the names of the moves. In her AEW career, Anna Jay is no joke, guys. No, no joke at all. Right. And I mean, 
Taz, she's somebody that, and Anna J, she's somebody that we've seen kind of. Oh, you slap your chest. Before. What is this, a slap battle? <laughs> what is going on here, dude? Why is this going through a commercial break? Starting out here in AW, you know, and her evolution has been really impressive. Absolutely. As Mariah. Oh, oh, wow. not, not delivering the chops, instead returning Anna to the ring. Doesn't want to give these uh, Charleston faithful what they wanted to see. Sometimes you act like you're going to chop someone, then you don't do it. That's part of things. That's right. You're the best analyst in the biz, Thank Taz. You. Thank you. Thank you, a Taz. Lot things, man. A lot of things. A lot of things going on. A lot of things have gone on tonight, hasn't it? Yes, yeah, it's sir. been a packed show. We still have that AEW World Championship Eliminator match to come as Mariah takes down Anna. The leg is hooked. Anna kicking out. The self-fulfilling prophecy continues. Anna with those dancers legs. The self-fulfilling prophecy, guys. Where, where the person in charge doesn't really care about the women, so does he in turn doesn't give them anything to do. So in turn, nobody cares about the women's division. So in turn, he believes people don't really care about women's wrestling, so I should keep booking it in the smallest little spots and with no storylines. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. He doesn't care, so he thinks other people don't care. So he What's books it like people don't care, and then people don't care. It's a straight jacket, you salty old book. Could have sworn Bailey had like a show stealer uh, situation during Wrestle Freaking Mania in Philadelphia. People do care about women's wrestling when you do something with it, when you give them a storyline, you give them a cool thing to do. That hip attack, a tribute to our world champion, Tony Storm. But guess Anna. what? If this you if you come the into the equation thinking no one cares, and then you book it like no one cares, on the on no one one's going to care. Hammer You're fulfilling your own prophecy. Be careful here, Anna. Anna Collins. Maybe not. Kick in the corner. Great job by Anna right there. Great flexibility. And now Anna... Look at looks like a version of that Connell Club. Dang, that's a, Mariah down hard. That's a crazy slam right there. I like that slam. That looked crazy low though. Look like Tony with the toy wrestlers in it. Yeah, exactly. If you if you are you invite your friend over, like let's say like back when you were in middle school or something, you had a sleepover, right? And then like you have twelve games to play, but you have a game you really like. And then there's 11 other games on the on this shelf. Like, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. They're gonna be like, "Oh, let's play that game you like." Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. La, 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 la. It's time for WB. <laughs> yes, goop their nose. Rah, 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 rah. Yes. And now bringing Anna. Wow, they've been going for 14 minutes two. already. Jeez. Anna able to kick out. WB, thank you so much for the 35 bits. TNT, Jay White has I'll found see you. an opponent. He will go one on one with Matt Sida. Oh wow, he found an opponent. We didn't Very even see how he found him or what happened. Just, just Julia that's who he's fighting. Championship on the line against yeah, 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 legit Layla Hirsch. Layla you the Perry goat, man. And we will see cool hand Angela <laughs> Parker take on Zack Knight. This is a rivalry. Your catchphrase on while, Twitch. Right <laughs> William, welcome. Oh, Adam really caught Mariah with that kick. But Let's go. Him. I hope they Plus never run this back. Goes one on one with Alex Reynolds. And Dark Not trying to see this match ever Anna again. Win it here and no, Mariah able to kick out. Out guys didn't know that that Keep this is where the best out. wrestle Keep but you, you, you have anna J in the, the ring right now wrestling to a to a 15 plus minute match this with a girl who's going to be challenging for the world Atlanta. title she was in some serious trouble at the hands of thunder rosa now the same can be said against anna J. but mariah no rolls up and i got her oh, what a win. What wow a win. and and mariah may wins by a sneaky roll-up too this is the right type of stuff I'm talking about, man. And I think that's where the experience edge of Mariah this is one of the best wrestlers, except for when it's not. Except for when you just keep on giving these these weirdly long matches to people who have never won anything. We have the money sign. 
Yeah, Bob Stone is gone. I told you they took away my monetization. Who's that? Mariah May and Mina Shirakawa, they had a reunion this past weekend at the start of event. And now Mina... Mina's here. Mina? Mina's from stardom, okay. Mira? It's not Mira. And Mina Shirakawa making her AEW debut here tonight. And now Mina looking... Bring me champagne. Dude, this is so clunky and weird. There's always another glass of champagne somewhere. I don't know if Verizon shakes it. I have a zip of beverage right now. Is that maybe water? What the hell's going on here, Excalibur? Give me water. What are we witnessing here? Well, we were witnessing Mina Shirakawa. I know that, but it's kind of boring champagne down this the This is so Mariah clunky, May. dude. This whole thing has been clunky since the very beginning. Oh. Renee drank it all. <laughs> right then. What a night. What a night. What a... What an incredible night. They're friends. We've seen a little bit of everything. As Mina Shirakawa coming to the aid of Mariah May, Timeless Tony Storm. Nowhere to be found. And Mariah May victorious and right now They're friends guys Tony Al Scoops Alex Marvez trying to get a word with the CEO Mercedes Monet I am here with the CEO Mercedes Monet and Mercedes thank you for taking the time I wanted to ask you about last week when you What said a clunky that you segment to dude TBS champion a double or nothing Now we got Mercedes, dude. The, the second half of this show is going to be a landslide of, of viewership. I, I absolutely guarantee it. The first half leading up to the Young Bucks, they, they're probably going to have pretty good retention. And then this second half, this is this is one of the major problems with Dynamite that I've noticed. is like It's a show of two halves. There's like an interesting half, and then there's like the get it done half where, where it's just a bunch of weirdness from Tony Khan. I can't wait to watch that match. I can't wait to see both those girls throw it down because they are the very best. And Julia has been one. Wonder how many takes. Champion. I wonder how many takes I mean, it took so Sasha to get this so right. She's the most mush mouth nonsense person on the mic that they have. She's going to play. She's really she bad on the mic. For sure, but Willow on the yeah, other hand, such a weird match, she dude. Is a to I mean, not a weird with. match. Weird I've dynamite. I've been in the ring with Willow before, and trust me, she is dangerous. Talk to me about that. Yeah, WB, it makes no sense. I mean, it's they just kind keep of hard on for keeping me to talk on. Man. About because it was the hardest moment in my career. I mean, almost a year ago, I faced Willow Nightingale for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship. And not only did I lose that match, I got injured in that match. Not only did I get injured in that match, I lost that chance to be the first ever woman to hold that championship. And if you know anything about me, I hate to lose. But being the CEO of AEW now, I always the CEO. have a plan. And Not I'm CEO, on a just CEO. And I can't wait for a double or nothing. So who would you rather face, Julia or Willow? Hey! What's, what's going on? Oh, the lights went out. Turn on the lights. Mercedes got laid out. Her neck, her back, her neck and her back. The assailant was or assailant. Oh no! Fans coming up next, live on Dynamite. We're gonna try to get an update. Dang man, it was the devil. Samoa Joe next. Ay ay ay. Well, at least that wasn't the the average. They they ramped it up a little bit to where something actually happened to her <laughs> goodness gracious you're glad she's not in wwe dragging bailey down um uh, she's got such a weird idea about what her career should be i just i don't get it her her career feels like that whole last segment we just got just weirdly clunky and like what are you thinking about like how does how is this good 
Sky, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I don't get it. Mercedes Mushmouth. Yeah, dude, she's she's the worst on the mic that they have. Bar none. I, I haven't heard anybody who messes up as much as her, who feels like they just don't have a grasp on how to take your time to say words. All she has to do is just slow down, man. Got to see uh, petty middle school behavior. A lot of shots at the ceiling. <laughs> I think they stopped doing that, though, right? It's a Twilight Zone AEW. Yeah, yeah. It is, man. But what are you gonna do? You gotta gotta take what you get, I guess. And then and then we're get we're about to get a uh, probably like ten, 10 minute match, maybe a little bit more. I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, your main event tonight is an AEW World Title Eliminator match. Introducing first from Huntington Beach, California, weighing 310 pounds, he is the AEW World Champion. Well, you see Samoa Joe limping a little bit. That was because of how we began our broadcast tonight. Swerve Strickland, just a, a drop kick to the back of the unsuspecting Samoa Joe. This was the match, Tony, that was supposed to kick off our broadcast tonight, but instead we have it in our main event tonight on Dynamite. And what concerned me was Joe's head hitting that table like that. Medical assistance came out. Swerve was sent away, and notice Taz how Joe was looking to both sides as he walked out this time. Yeah, he ticked off, and I don't blame him. Yeah, and he's got to deal with a, a legendary figure right here in Dustin Rhodes right about now. It's tough, tough slugging for Joe. And his opponent from Austin, Texas, weighing 230 pounds. Will they call him the natural Justin Rhodes? Dustin Rhodes with such an amazing amazing multi-decade career but the one thing that's always eluded him was a world championship yeah this match the eliminator match allows dustin rhodes to get one step closer because taz a victory over joe in an eliminator match will grant dustin rhodes a shot at the aw world championship which is massive if dustin could pull it off and i'll tell you he's got an advantage because Absolutely. Joe is banged up because of what happened at the top of the show, Shivani. And there you go. And there's he's taking advantage of it right now, Taz. But, but Joe's a fighter, isn't he? He is. Because Joe, Joe right now, and I know Joe well, as most know, Joe is cornered, right? Literally cornered. But he's he's a wounded a wounded animal right now, a wounded champion. Sometimes those are the most dangerous folks to be around. And I think in this match, Taz, Joe's going to be constantly looking over his shoulder because Will Swerve Strickland reemerge. Well, uh, yeah, if he does, that would be catastrophic. For Joe and Dustin will probably grab a victory. That's why Joe brought out that chain. And yeah, that chain, that, corner. that chain that belonged to Swerve Strickland. Now Joe with possession of the chain. And remember what we talked about earlier. Joe said that there was going to be a blood price to be paid by for that attack by Swerve Strickland. And that price was going to be paid tonight. But Dustin Rhodes, the natural, undeterred, taking the fight to the champion in this eliminator match. And let's also mention we got an overrun, so we're going to stay with this match as long as it takes to get a winner here tonight. No, it's not often that Joe gets in the ring with someone who has more experience than him, but Dustin does. And Dustin has some legit damn experience. And I can tell you how legit Dustin is. I've, I've wrestled Dustin years ago. He is a bad man. 
And Joe knows it. And Joe, like I said, it's not 100%. Oh, oh Dustin! Set hard into the post by a very rageful Samoa Joe. And that slowed down the offense, Shivani, for sure, for and, Dustin. And, and that's why he did it. You see how Joe walked away, tried to regain composure there, and now he's going to walk back for the attack. And referee Paul Turner given the 10. Oh, <laughs> talk about oh, the wow. blood price. Wow. Dustin Roach is opened up, and fans, our main event will continue in picture in picture. Don't go anywhere. And that's the, we, I mean, we say it ad nauseum, Taz, but that's the effect of that squared off ring post. You catch an edge like that, it can open up a laceration. It happens that quick. You're not wrong. Oh, I and mean, that's exactly that. what happened. That's a gash. You can see the gash on his forehead. And Samoa Joe just sizing up Dustin Rhodes. And right there on the, on the right side of his forehead, Paul Turner checking in. He, he's looking at the doctor. He said, he's okay. Well... Paul knows he's right there, but it doesn't look okay to me, guys. Yeah, no, I know. And Joe just focusing yeah, right on that open wound. Focusing his attacks, trying to open up that laceration further oh, and man. further. Man, only took a couple minutes for Joe to get that advantage. And now oh, Joe showing that viciousness. Peeling, just pulling open that gash on his forehead. What kind of sadistic person does that take? Oh, he doesn't. Whoa! Oh, that's wild a swing and a miss. Yeah. That, that was a haymaker. Dustin committed everything he had to that one. Oh. Blood all over Joe's hands and those ridge hand chops right to the top of the head to that open wound. And you know, Swerve Strickland, understandably, still upset about how we went off the air last week, Tony. Yeah. Busted open, signing that contract for the match at Dynasty in his own blood. Yeah. Swerve did. Absolutely. Well, as you can see two, now, two weeks in a row, three. Joe has been quote unquote out for blood and it's just going to make that match coming up at dynasty even crazier i'm telling you guys now that that pack and and okada have agreed to their match boy dynasty i can't wait to see this event man oh it's shaping up to a massive massive beautiful event that we have coming up dynasty for sure st louis jones right st louis jones brother uh, shape it's uh, arena if you can't be there in person name it's arena watch it on thriller tv i gotta say it Oh, the Joe's old time. <laughs> did you say Snape? <laughs> I, I did. Oh, well, I don't but. believe they will be carrying down. <laughs> <laughs> a cover here. As Dustin Rhodes kicking out, but that's a lot of blood. And, and I mean, with every beat of Dustin Rhodes' heart, more and more blood mm. leaves that wound on his head. Thank you. Yeah. The squirting out. Thanks for being so graphic. <laughs> Appreciate that, Nolan. You're, you're welcome. Joe, those overhand chops. Oh, but Dustin! Body shot changes levels. Can the natural Dustin Rhodes earn a shot at the AEW World Championship if he picks up a victory over Samoa Joe? He certainly will, but Joe not making it look easy. Cover in the natural Dustin Rhodes. There you see, busted open by having his head sent into the ring post oh, by oh the champion God. Samoa that, Joe. That's a bad wound right yeah, there. It you is. can just see it. That is nasty at the hands of the world champion Samoa Joe. Splitting open the man known as Dustin Rhodes. That is, that is very graphic. I'm telling you, if Dustin's going to win this match, he's really going to have to fight from underneath. Yeah, he is, and, he, and he's yeah. used to that, and, and he's led before in his career, Dustin has. And Dustin trying to draw on the support of this great crowd here in Charleston. But Joe, he has been targeting that wound on Dustin's head all throughout. Oh, Dustin turns it around with the power slam. Yeah, but he can't follow up. That's all he's got right now, that blood dripping down in his eyes. That was impressive, though, that snap power slam on someone the size of Samoa Joe and Dustin trying to get Charleston West Virginia behind him with that hip rotation good quick feet and not about power with something like that it's technique Taz having a having a weapon like that power slam in your holster I mean that that is that has taken Dustin Rhodes so far will it take him to a shot at the AW World Championship yeah we'll see I mean he's bringing it right now Dustin is Joe swinging on miss but 
Dustin. Well, I said he grabs him out of comeback, and buddy, he is a oh. Dustin is boom. Mounting a comeback. And boot to the midsection. Dustin. Rush, cold red. Two. No. Pitch a perfect cold red. By the man rocking black and red and a lot of red on his head. Dustin Rhodes. As Joe up to his feet, a grimace there on his face. As right hand raining down on the head of our AEW world champion. Oh, Bulldog coming up. You're not kidding. Dustin, no, maybe telegraphed it. Maybe not coming up. Joe, oh. Joe that lariat took Dustin down. Well, not Dustin off his feet, not even to his back. Sometimes you get hit so hard, you don't even go to your back. You just get rocked. Your legs just like spaghetti legs. Are you surprised that Joe's going out to get him? I mean, no. I thought he would just, you're not. I no, thought he would just stay in the ring. No, he wants to make an example out of Dustin. He wants to do that. He wants to show Strickland, this is your fault. Okay. I'm going to bust this man open because of you. And he's going for more blood this here. This is your fault. Joe! I'm gonna bust this man open. Into the post by Dustin Rhodes. Oh, we gotta fight fire with fire. That's the world title there. Dustin with that AW World Championship belt in his hand. This is not legal. Yeah, referee Paul Turner. Yeah, Dustin wants this shot. He needs to drop the belt right now. If Dustin hits him with it, it's a disqualification. There it goes. There we go. Ever. Old Holding chicken sub found in the fridge. Uh oh, yo, I wouldn't eat that, Sky. Yep, Dustin Rose is bleeding. It's wrong, but I get it. Referee is He's feeding. bleeding, and his chance at this title is fleeting. All right, good. Get it out of the way now. I don't know. That sounds like Dustin a. Sounds like a, a Simpsons episode waiting to happen. Crossroads. Samoa Joe kicks out of the crossroads. Mama Rhodes is watching. Is this bad had vinegar on it? Oh no, Sky. Sky, no. Oh no. Sky, you gotta make sure you come in the stream tomorrow. I wanna make sure you're okay. That sounds like a That sounds like a bad one right there. Oh yeah, yeah. Dustin Rhodes backs Joe up to the corner. Charges. Oh, oh, oh. oh, too much of a man in the corner. Power, yeah. Oof. And oh, brother. Oh, my goodness. And Joe with a chain in his hand. That's where Strickland's chain. Yeah, Joe doesn't give a damn about the disqualification here. He said Joe gets disqualified right now? to be paid for what happened to kick off our broadcast. Oh, he's got the belt. Oh, Joe. He clocked him with the belt. Paul Turner didn't see it. Guys, you know that world where Samoa Joe, the world champion, needs to cheat to win against Dustin Rhodes? Yeah, gas station sushi. That sounds sounds bad. Oil and vinegar on it. Yum. Yeah, yum now. I bet you it's abnormally yummy. That's that's the food that gets you sick. The food that gets you sick is the stuff that tastes abnormally yummy. You're like, man, this sandwich is... Man. Mmm. This taquito from the gas station tastes better than normal. And then the next day. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope you'll be okay. Swerve is right there. He kicked his head in. My God. The house call from Swerve Joe. He couldn't hear it over the volume of the crowd. Yeah, Joe's locked. And now Strickland's grabbing his own chain. His chain, meaning Strickland. Joe, meanwhile, can uh -oh. stand swerve, Your right picture will change with it, or you can have a new a new picture. Oh, oh you you cycled through some new water. pictures. <laughs> who's this picture, Wardlow? Who, who's on your picture right now? Wardlow? No, that's MJF. I thought it was Wardlow. It's MJF. The reason why the security Dang, was not win by DQ. Nope. It's, it's because of the magnitude of this match. Absolutely. This is the main event at Dynasty. We are just 11 days away. We don't want anything to jeopardize 
Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland for the AW World Championship. Yeah, look at him eye the prize there, Taz. Yeah. Well, that could be the scene come Dynasty. And then uh, we shall see if Nana the brought him the title. Once again, Samoa Joe on the ramp looking all crazy. <laughs> and will that be the scene in St. Louis? Swerve Strickland, our next got the title. world champion. Or will Samoa Joe retain? Well, we have had an absolutely loaded edition of Dynamite, and this week only gets bigger. We've got Rampage coming up this Friday night, 10 night Central on TMT. Then three straight hours of action live this Saturday night. AEW Collision back to back with Battle of the Belt. 10, three straight hours live on TNT. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on Dynamite. For Tony Schiavone, for Taz, I'm Excalibur. We'll see you Friday night at Rampage. Wow. There you have it, guys. It's time. It's time to do a little reviewing of what we were viewing. Time for a little chat. A little, a little grapple chat, if you will. Grape apple chat. No, it's grapple chat. It's time to chat about the graps. Let's find out what you guys thought. It's time, guys. It's time. It's time for us to talk. Time to just have a little chat about this. I gotta know. What did you think about this episode? Or ep episode. I can't call it an episode. Episodes are tomorrow. For uh, the nitty gritty. But what did you think of this episode of Dynamite? Now, keep in mind, the scores that I will accept are between 8.4 is the highest score I will take out of 10. 7.0 is the lowest score I will take out of 10. So anywhere between 7.0 at the lowest, 8.4 at the highest. I'll take anything in between these two. Let's find out. It's time, yes. Radio notes. Wait a minute. Big Bad Samoan Joe. <laughs> Cheated to win, yeah. This is, uh, it, it's, at this point, it's, continuously happening to the point where it is it is a design choice and it's and it's one of my least favorite things in wrestling week after week and it, and normally it's what brings my score down uh when somebody who's supposed to be the best wrestler in the world has 20 minute matches versus somebody who's never won anything in AEW has never presented as anything in AEW hasn't hasn't uh held a title hasn't won tag team gold hasn't done anything recently to make themselves look like something major and then they're just suddenly wrestling 20 20 minute matches 15 minute matches and and suddenly the the best wrestler in the world is having the worst the worst trouble in their life versus somebody who is not presented as the one you know and and i know what they think they're doing but you're doing the opposite you're actually shaving credibility off of the the big bad guy you're, you're shaving credibility off of the guy you're saying is the best in the world by having them having such a tough time against somebody who you have not presented that way and you've had five years at this point to present whoever you like as a credible threat you've had five years to do it and you're waiting till the last second to try to do it 
on an episode of Dynamite. You're you're giving 15 minutes to it or 20 minutes to it. Just that stuff doesn't make any sense to me, and it, and it actively drags down my ability to care about matches. 7.0 says uh, Zach, I got you. Thank you, Zach. Let's see. Uh, J Dog says 7.3. Thank you, J Dog. You got it. Uh, 7.75 says Kelly. Kelly says it was right across the finish line. I'm glad you liked it, Kelly. Thank you for your score. Uh, Goki says 7.7. Thank you, Goki. Goki says just a little below the, the cutoff, but still good. Um, Portman says 7.4. 7.4 Foreman. George Foreman. You became George Foreman for a second. Thank you, Portman. Finnish Viking says 7.4756. You got it. Thank you, Finnish Viking. Uh WB says 7.23. But that's a that's a rhyme. You got rhymes. I see you, I see you. Thank you very much, WB. J-Rock says, 7.48.5592. Aha, the panda paw. Whoosh. i got to figure out why the calculator doesn't work on my computer over here, but we're doing it. We're making it happen. Um... Alice says 7.4. Got a lot of 7.4s. I think we're reaching some sort of average here. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Alice. 7.65592. Is that 25? Yeah, 5592. 5592. Says radio. Thank you, radio. The panda paw. Ryan says 7.5 in. Ryan says 7.5. You got it. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Is that that? Let's make sure we got it all, all wrapped up here. Ten seconds left, guys. Please place your score in the chat if you'd like for it to count. If I gave uh, NXT 7.8, there's no way Dynamite is better than NXT. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's, that's, that's on average, though, because... I feel like NXT has more of a, a mission statement and a plan and, and a way of building uh, characters and things. Where Whereas they might not have the better wrestlers, they have the better storytellers, and story is always going to make a match better. You could have the worst match in the world, but if but if there's a, a reason why people are fighting, then it, it, it matters suddenly, you know? Suddenly it matters. You ever seen, like, one of those bum fights? It's like, you know, that's personal, dude. Why are they fighting? Oh, my God, they're on the streets, you know? Like, there's something to it. It makes it matter because of, like, you know it's it's ride or die. It's, it's they actually have a reason to be fighting. It's not just, I'm the best. No bums ever were like, I'm the best bum. Let me fight you. So NXT is is most likely going to get better scores week by week because NXT has an idea of how to build characters, build uh, emotional investment and storylines, and just just let people know who you are and why you're here and what's next and why you're fighting and all that. Not every match, but a lot more often than this. All right, that's about it. All right, so that's that's the. Uh, that's the uh, scores that I'm taking from you guys. All right, so thank you everybody who gave a score. By the way, I, I really do appreciate that. Without you guys, it's just it's just my score, and then that's you know that's every other review show at that point. I like I like making this a, a show of of us, and uh, my score mattering as much as you guys' scores. Uh, I'm gonna give this a seven point. Dude, that second half was just, it, it just, it went right back into the, just the old thing that makes the show so missable. And so like, who cares what happens next? I, I really gotta, 
I got to stick it to him tonight. I really have to because you started out with, with an idea. You started out with that fire and that, that passion. And then you gave me the longest edge match for some reason. Made no sense why he was so beat down and just laying around all day. It's goodness gracious, man. And then and then the Young Bucks thing, it kind of it brought, it brought some of that interest back to the show and it and it's probably all people are going to talk about tonight and i understand if you have a show that's that has one angle that you know everyone's going to talk about you probably don't want to stuff it full of other stuff that you want people talking about because then it gets overshadowed but they it, it feels like they didn't even try for the rest of the show so i'm going to go 7.0 i'm i'm literally just going to stick it to them all the way because this is this is the type of show that that waste your time in the most devious way because they make the show good at first and then the last half you're just sitting here like okay what what am i here for 7.0 let's do the math uh it adds up to 88.898072 divided by one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve scores, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, yeah, divided by twelve equals. 7.40. They did not get the point, and they did not get a half a point either. And uh, couldn't happen to a more uh, yin and yang show. Like, if one half of your show is great, or not even great, if one half of your show is presentable and one half of your show just feels like you get it done with, then your show's not good. You can't just have a cherry on top because you didn't put the cherry on top. The cherry wasn't on top. The cherry was under the rest of the nonsense. So, there you go. Dynamite sitting at zero as the season starts. Maybe Collision will bring home a, a point for them. And we're switching out MLW for NWA. So, that, that's exciting for this season. So far, both Raw and NXT were able to scratch the board with a point. Dynamite comes through with a... Uh, an effort that I'm sure they can do better than, and I'm looking forward to it. But tonight was not that night, and uh, Collision is coming up, so hopefully Collision is just gonna, you know, burn it down. Hopefully it'll be great. Where was Trent? Yeah, where was Orange Cassidy? Where was Trent? Did did we see that? Didn't didn't Orange Cassidy say he was gonna tell us his feelings about what happened with Trent? Did I just miss that? Maybe that was right before the main event or something. Remember they were outside of Orange Cassidy's locker room? What happened there? Did did I miss that or did it happen? Because William's saying, where did, where's that at? I don't know either. You would think that the, the biggest betrayal on the on the guy that Tony Khan can't can't seem to keep off this show would be the biggest storyline. It would be something that would at least be touched on. I really, I really, it was some wild CM Punk stuff, but nothing. Wait, what? Young Bucks fake punk drama? It's not fake. It's just they, they found a way to kind of like weave it into the FTR stuff, which uh, at least they did that. It could have just been another little, little victory lap type of thing. Like, oh, look at, look at this, you know, uh, at least they made it into something to look forward to. Uh, and I appreciated that. That's, I think that's the part of the show where I was like, okay. You got over that hurdle because that was the hurdle. To me, that was the main hurdle that they needed to get over during the shows. Like, If you're going to present that footage, you better do something with it. And so they presented the footage and they did something with it. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then after that, it was like, <laughs> Hook and Jericho and, and Shibata getting pinned and uh, the, the weird clunky women's segment with the sh champagne and then it just goes into a match that's clunky as well and then some for some reason 
Mariah May is having a, a 10 minute, 14 minute match versus a girl who we're the best wrestle where she's not even a good wrestler. She's, she's as green as uh, not as green as can be, but Anna Jay is definitely not world champion material. So you can't come out here and scream where the best wrestle. And then you have this girl out here who, who is obviously maybe okay at best. And then, uh, you just man it just there's too too much that took away from my hype levels in this and then i just didn't care about the main event at all because why would the the world champion think about what mjf went through mjf was all wrapped up he took a he took a freaking uh a beat down from the guns rode a uh he rode a ambulance to the hospital, came back and beat Jay White straight up. But Samoa Joe gets gets one attack put on him, and suddenly he's he's face to face, toe to toe, neck and neck with Dustin Rhodes. Like you're not telling the right story, and you're not you're not telling a consistent story either. I think consistency is more important than even telling the right story because at least at least make Dustin Rhodes that type of threat before you do something like this. And why is Samoa Joe cheating to win the main event? I'm I'm just it, it just it, it, it reeks of you're wasting my time. And I and I just don't like wasting my time. I, I like when a show presents people the way that I'm supposed to look at them and then they continue that story. You don't have, um, you don't have Hawkeye going toe to toe with Thanos for fourteen minutes just because. Oh, Hawkeye's the guy around this time, dude. No, Hawkeye will get his just entire life turned inside out if he messed with Thanos. Okay, keep that same momentum, keep the same story life. He might get a couple cool arrows in here. He might look cool for a second, but it's not gonna be a fourteen minute match. And you never told me that it would be. That's consistency. And then Thanos has to cheat to beat him at the end, too. Thanos is like, oh, my God, uh, what am I going to do? He, like, grabs his daughter and, like, tries to hit him with his daughter or something. Like, you don't, Thanos doesn't need to do any of that. He will just beat you, period. So, yeah. Uh, thank you to everybody who gave a score tonight. Uh, I, I wish this show would have been two halves of a good equation, but it was one half good, one half just get it get it done with and let's get let's let's go to rampage you can and and i feel like that's one of the main problems with dynamite is that it's so attached at the hip to rampage that they try to do stuff on the show that leads into rampage and it just ends up looking so so like undercooked underdeveloped and you know they got to be on right after to to like film the rest of it and it just feels like it's it's hamstrung by being so attached to a show that is so less than in so many ways that it's like it's like if i did this stream and then right after as soon as this stream ends i have to uh knit and you can barely even see me knitting it's just like you can barely see the top of my fingers you're not seeing any of the stars you're not seeing you're not even seeing my face maybe it's just the top of my fingers and then i'm doing a knitting stream for the next five hours like they hamstring themselves by being so attached to Rampage that, and they even let Rampage touch the screen, makes it just brings it down, kind of like the Ring of Honor stuff. At least they've kind of divorced themselves from letting Ring of Honor monopolize the screen time like they were doing it. It's gotten better in that regard, so I give them props for that. But on the flip side, they've hamstrung themselves by being so attached to these weird little little rampage storylines that aren't even storylines so just they, they got to figure out a way to divorce themselves completely from rampage and i just I, I feel like the main way to do that is just to cancel that show just get rid of it it doesn't it doesn't ever really do anything and if you're and I, I know what they think they're doing with it. They think they're building stars on that show to, to challenge for titles. But the thing is, if they're not on the main show, you're not building stars. You're not doing that because it's not NXT. It, you didn't set it up that way. You did, You never announced it that way. You never presented it that way. So nobody's thinking of it that way. But 
if that's what you're doing, fine. But but you've already you've made your bed with Rampage. It, nobody's thinking about it that way. Besides the people who are just going to watch it all day, and then you're 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 undermining people's uh, ability to to care about stars when you're trying to make stars on a show that they don't want to watch anymore. They just need to find a way to divorce uh, Dynamite completely from Rampage. And maybe that just means set up Rampage feuds and things like that with your YouTube channel instead of setting it up on the show because it seems so so much like an afterthought that you're making the people involved in these feuds seem like an afterthought. You're bringing them down actively by the way you're advertising their next match. If my next match... Guys, I have a match. It's going to be versus anybody that they find backstage for me to fight. And then in the corner, it says Gritty Urban versus Matt Seidel. Like, what? That's what happened tonight. Jay White legitimately was like, I'll fight whoever you find for me. He <laughs> he. And then a couple minutes later, they had a little graphic in the, in the side of the screen that says, oh, he's going to fight Matt Seidel on Rampage. You're making a guy who was just fighting for the world title into... A little, a little box in the corner versus a guy they have. He has no reason to fight, and you didn't even show how they put the fight together. You're actively degrading his star power by doing this, and they gotta just quit, man. They really do. They they need a retool for Rampage, and and that retool needs to be making it completely separate from dynamite unless you're going to start stepping up your production value and your your presentation of why these matches are happening stop putting it on dynamite because it's just making these people seem like nobody nothing nothing to worry about you're you're reducing a previous new japan world champion to a a little picture in the corner because somebody in his crew found side l and we never saw it happen that ain't a that ain't an epic match i mean it it it's probably cool for people who want to see that but you're not you're not making people want to see that <laughs> take a second man goodness gracious you you could take they could have taken, they could have shaved five minutes off that that edge match, made him look a heck of a lot better than he looked in that match, and you could have spent that five minutes to show how Matt Seidel and Jay White came across having a problem that they need to settle. Because I I can guarantee you, in nobody's book was that Penta versus Adam Copeland match a, a good thing that made them both look good. Didn't happen. It'll probably get some some cage match scores or whatever, but that's the people who do cage match. The rest of us saw what happened, and we know what happened. We know that was not a great match, and we know that it made Edge look mad touchable. Uh, even though Penta's good, but it made him look touchable in a way that made him look, seem uh, like he's like he's maybe too old to do it or something. It was just not not what what you want to see from a champion, especially not a champion doing open challenges. If you're gonna do open challenges, you need to be spry. You need to be ready to take people out. Like when when uh, John Cena was doing his United States title open challenges. Remember, he he has the five moves of doom, so it works with him. It doesn't work if John Cena's laying around the ring for ten minutes straight, staring at the lights. You gotta have a competitive match, but if you're gonna have a competitive match, you need to get it over with with the the moves of doom. You know, get get this dude out of here, make him look cool for a second, but don't sit there for however many minutes that was it seemed like an eternity why is jericho still leading guys in tv segments i don't know i don't know i don't see the rock putting on 30 minute bangers with tozala exactly but that's that's what they they think is is what the bees knees is and it's not working and it's not even working with the people who do like to see dream matches you have to set that stuff up man you have to set it up. If you if it's going to be a 20-minute match between The Rock and Tozawa, you need to tell me why. You need to tell me how Tozawa's got his number and Tozawa was trained by like The Rock's personal trainer and The Rock The Rock got uh betrayed by his own trainer and the trainer was like making Rock think he was lifting big weights but he wasn't. Like he put he like 
he switched out his weights for lighter weights so the rock thinks he's benching the most he ever he ever did and but the trainer was just getting him you know the trainer was making him think he was benching 300 but he was actually benching like 185 so when the rock gets in the ring with tozawa it's like he tries to lift him he's like oh what's going on what's going you know like do something interesting that's a storyline i just came up with the guy's personal trainer has it out for him wants to see him lose He's aligned with the other guy, and now Tozawa has the upper hand because the the Brock's personal trainer has been messing with his diet. He's been feeding him the wrong foods. He's been getting him kind of chubby. He's been uh, he's been messing with the the settings on his treadmill to where he thinks he's doing like twenty miles an hour. He's really doing ten. Like he's degrading the Rock's physical. Uh, acumen he's making him less buff and less strong and he thinks that he's doing everything right and then he gets in the ring and he finds out oh my god this guy's running circles around me why is this happening and then it it's revealed that the trainer messed you over that's a story and that makes it make more sense why somebody who's never been presented as somebody who could touch you is touching you that's a story that's interesting that sets up betrayal. That sets up emotion. That sets up a oh my god moment. That sets up a lot of cool things that you can bank on later on. It's not just suddenly this guy is world championship material and Samojo has to cheat to beat him. Like, makes no sense. But that's just something I came up with in two seconds. This is why I call this type of booking lazy. Is because in two seconds I came up with a better storyline than anything I saw tonight. That's why I call it lazy because it is, it really is. And it's, and it's, it's stuck in a box because there's a per, there's one person that all this goes through. And it's the same thing we said when Vince McMahon was booking the shows for one guy himself. We said it about Vince. We could say it here. It's stuck in a box because one guy has the okay on this stuff. And you can just tell what he's involved in because it's where the show goes through the floor. That's a cool story, right? The personal trainers had it up to him, you know, and they could even show the footage of that, like where where like uh, the rock was mad one day and he was, you know, maybe it was when he was slapping that uh, slapping the Mama Rhodes belt, you know, and then the the trainer was like, Rock, we, it, it's been long enough. You got to get back on the back on the treadmill. He's like, I'll tell you when I do this. And he accidentally slaps the guy because he's angry because he's so hyped up. And that's the moment where the trainer's like. F this guy rock, dude. He thinks he could just treat me how I how he wants to. Like, I'm trying to help him, and he's over here slapping me. He's over here hitting me with his weight belt. I'm trying to get him on. It's WrestleMania in a, in a couple weeks, you know? And then that's the moment where he snaps, where the where the personal trainer is like, you know what? Let's 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 make Tozawa get this dude, you know? And you could see it like happening slowly, and then they show the footage of like when it happened and why why he thought that and then he, and then after the turn after the the personal trainer turns on the rock he explains his actions and the rock's mad about it and then the rock has to do the the rocky stuff where he's like running up the hill and lifting logs or whatever and he rebuilds himself and he gets his win back you know that's a good story and it just comes out of easily doable stuff that everybody goes through in wrestling everybody has to train or or maybe you don't and then you lose your lose your physique, you lose your your quickness, you lose your your strength. That's how you can tell a story where somebody gets the the one up on somebody who they should never be touching. Do that. But no, it's just suddenly Joe Schmo is as good as Samoa Joe and I'm not calling Dustin Rhodes Joe Schmo, but it's like it has that tinge to it when you have a world champion cheating to win. He shouldn't have to cheat to win. When he won a two, he won a triple threat match with Swerve and Adam Page in it. Like he's already beaten two people who are arguably world championship material in a triple threat match. So a one on one, he shouldn't have to cheat to win. It just there, there's there's so many parts of this equation that don't add up to me that I'm they a lot of people say they're insulted by how much WWE explains stuff to you. Well, I'm insulted by by them not explaining things i'm ex i'm insulted by them making matches that don't make sense i'm insulted by that so i mean there's got to be a happy medium right don't don't over explain but make it make sense
He got jumped earlier in the night, Gritty. Okay, yeah. So did MJF, and he beat Jay White single-handedly and beat the freaking Bang Bang Gang and all that. So what are you trying to tell me? You're not telling a consistent story. But thank you guys for chilling with me. Make sure you keep hanging out if you're on the Twitch channel. Thank you to everybody on the YouTube channel as well. Get on over to the Twitch. That's where we're going to be at. But that was the chat.